The following is a presentation of Turner Sports. When he's been hot, he's been very hot. Chad Little, the man to beat. But Johnny Benson holds the points edge. Benson's consistency has increased his lead while Little's three wins combined with some bad luck, like here at Hickory, North Carolina, has kept him in second place. Today, for 300 miles, it's Benson versus Little. But hold on. There's some new challengers today. Last week's first-time winner, Tim Fedewa, and the defending champion, Phil Parsons, plus a multitude of Winston Cup stars ready to shake things up. Gray, overcast skies over the mile and a half, Charlotte Motor Speedway. Foreboding weather, they say, but be forewarned, we're in for a great race. The Red Dog 300, one of the three biggest races of the year. Let's meet the man on the pole right now with Randy Pemberton. And on the pole this afternoon is Big Rich Bickle in his Kleenex Ford. It's only his seventh career Bush Series start. Sound amazing? How about this? This car was done on Wednesday. It hit the track for the very first time on Thursday. Rich, how'd you get this thing dialed in so quick? Well, I'll tell you what, we got a great bunch of guys, and Fred Wonky and, and uh, Mark Poole and, and Roger Purcell, them guys worked their tails off. You know, Carl Wagner built us a great motor. I got to say thanks to two people. Gene Eisenhower from Terminal Trucking is like a dad to me, but my dad's back home, and this is for him. Okay, Rich, keep her up front. Good luck. Now standing by with a pretty good little shoe, starting back in the eighth position is the uh, guy that'll be working alongside me on pit road today, Larry McReynolds. Larry? Thanks, Randy. I'm here with Patty Moise. Patty, you're starting on the outside, the fourth row. Quite a bit different conditions today. Uh, what kind of strategy did he have? Well, Larry, I hope we've um, got the right setup here with the Dial Purex uh, Armor Ford. We were a little bit loose yesterday in all that heat with, um, you know, near, near nothing on the fuel. So we didn't make any changes. We're hoping with this overcast a little bit cooler today, that's really going to be the right thing. 300 miles, 200 laps to be covered. The Red Dog 300 this year here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway for 43 competitors. Now, usually Darrell Waltrip's alongside, but you remember last Saturday night, right here out of turn number four, battling for the lead. The 24 of Gordon in the middle, Earnhardt, or rather Earnhardt in the middle, Gordon on the bottom, and Waltrip in the wall at 180 miles per hour. And so, the situation today is Dick Bergeron is sitting in for Darrell. He discovered when they were running this morning his ribs really hurt. He's actually cracked three ribs. He just couldn't breathe. So, giving us a breather this afternoon, and it's his birthday, too. Happy birthday to Dr. Dick Bergeron of Stock Car Magazine. Uh, yeah, thanks for the swell present. Really nice tie, Ken. Weather is an issue today for sure. All of the practice and qualifying was run under hot sunny skies. Today we've got gray, overcast, and it's cool. The cars behave very, very differently as the weather changes. So some of the teams, including that starting on the pole, Bickles, have tried to adjust their cars for today's weather. Others, like Schrader, starting deep in the field, they've gone with a hot and sunny setup because there was no more practice to accommodate for this weather change. We'll see how it all shakes out in about 300 miles. And right now, here's the Haviland starting grid for the Red Dog 300. On the pole from Wisconsin, first career pole for Rich Bickle, and alongside is Tracy Leslie. Mark Martin is in position three in Elton Sawyer. For row three, there's Dale Jarrett, the 88-90 winner, and Michael Waltrip, the 93 winner. Chad Little is in position seven with Patty Mouise starting eighth. Hermie Sadler is ninth. And Jason Keller, ranking third in the points, is 10th. Mike Wallace, 11th. Kenny Wallace, his brother, 12th. Jeff Green is 13th. And Tim Bender, 14th. Glenn Allen Jr. starts 15th. Mike McLaughlin will be 16th today. In row nine, it's the veteran Tommy Houston and Dennis Setzer. Row 10, last week's winner at Nazareth, Tim Fidoa and Johnny Benson Jr., the point leader. Jim Bound starts in 21st. David Green, 22nd. Morgan Shepherd's 23rd, Rodney Combs 24th. Then comes Jeff Purvis and Phil Parsons, last year's winner. Rick Wilson is in the 27th position. And beside him is Larry Pearson. Jeff Fuller starts 29th, Bobby Dodder 30th. Curtis Markham is in 31st and Doug Hevron 32nd. 
Ken Schrader, who won the qualifying race yesterday, starts 33rd with Ted Musgrave, 34th. Terry Labonte back in 35th. Vermonter Kevin LePage, 36th. Dirk Stevens from Washington, 37th. Greg Sachs from Mattituck, New York, 38th. Jeremy Mayfield is 39th. Johnny Rumley, 40th. And David Bonnet's in the field today, starting 41st, with Ward Burton, 42nd, and Steve Grissom rounding out the field in 43rd position, the provisional starter as a defending champion in the Grand National Series. And one car is still on pit road, Ken. Jeff Fuller in the 47 car has not yet been able to fire. He is one of five cars that failed to start. Let's go to Rick Benjamin in the Duraloo Pit Center. Ken, let's take a look at our AutoZone race analysis. We'll be going the 300 miles for you today. 200 trips around the Charlotte Motor Speedway, mile and a half. And the banking on the turns, 24 degrees. Pretty steep here today. That leads to the high speeds. Our first, a nice $352,000 payoff at stake for the 43 drivers. Mike Skinner had the pole here one year ago at 172.4. Rich Bickle, nearly a mile an hour quicker to take this year's pole. Phil Parsons, as we mentioned, is the defending race winner. Darrell Waltrip, who couldn't be with us today. Five career Bush victories at Charlotte. He is the all-time leader in that category. Let's show you some of the scenes you're going to see from inside the automobiles today. First, Phil Parsons will take us around the racetrack in his Luxair Chevrolet. We'll start from 26th spot today, and we'll be glad to go along with Phil. A little further up the track, the Heilig Myers and Duran car. Mike Wallace will take us around the speedway as well today. He goes 11th. Mark Martin, a driver that many people think are going to do very, is going to do very well today in the Win Dixie car. Martin starts in the third spot. Former winner of this race will be riding with him as well today. And Dirk Stevens in the Duraloop Chevrolet will also have one of our in-car cameras aboard today as well. He's back in 37th spot. And we're going to get some great pictures for you from on high today. The steel aerial camera chopper side for us as we're getting ready to take the green here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Now there'll be no halftime in this race today. Over the past several years, we've had that break in the middle. No break today. We're going to run it right straight through. And that was the plan even before this uh, potential for weather problems came along. Right. Fuller's going again. Uh, he was one of five cars who had crashed earlier in practice and qualifying. He had a radio problem. Morgan Shepard now on pit road as they come down to take the green. And Morgan won't be with them when that happens. Under green. Rich Bickle brings him down. Tracy Leslie right there beside him. Good, clean start, and away we go racing. Doesn't take him long to stack him up here. Rich Bickle. Dad was a great racer up there at the Slimmer Speedway in Wisconsin. Here he comes, pushing for the lead. And here comes Mark Martin in the 60, down on the bottom. And from his onboard camera, as he closes in on Tracy Leslie, we complete lap number one. There you see Elton Sawyer just pulling up on the outside in that 38 car. Red carpet machine trying to pinch down on Martin, but not able to do so. And out of turn two and into the back straightaway, Martin again asserts the power of that Winn-Dixie Ford, and he's on his way. You see Chad Little trying to move through there. Elton Sawyer up on the outside. Dale Jarrett with a real good run in the number 32 car as well. He is now running in the fifth spot. Little on the bottom. Trying to draw away Rich Bickle. What a story on that number 54. Not that much experience in super speedways, but he sure is smooth thus far. Chad Little again trying to pick up a spot here as he fights with Dale Jarrett side by side. Here comes the 23. Dale Jarrett up on the high, and there is Michael Waltrip, winner back in 93. The man who's won three main events this year, that's Chad Little. Back in front. Rich Pickle is there with his four. Tracy Leslie Chevrolet in second, working lap number four. I'm surprised at how well Pickle's running out here off the pole. A lot of guys surprise you with the pole, but Look at him, just staying steadfast and right in the throttle. I'm not really all that surprised, Ken. He is a very experienced race driver, although his experience is not here at Charlotte. He has run 106 different racetracks in his career. This guy has really seen some laps, and that counts. When he walks into a new racetrack, it doesn't take him very long to get acclimated to it. Well, there you see the front four coming by. It's Bickle, followed by Leslie, Sawyer, Martin, Chad Little. Looking further back in the field. As you get that Napa rundown here, take a look at 
the leader of the points, Benson, fighting his way up through. That looks like Mike McLaughlin coming to the inside and trying to make a move further back in the field. Is that the 99-99 indeed of Phil Parsons, last year's champion? But not last year's car. He's with a new team this time. Last year when he won this race, uh, he was the owner of the car or his wife, depending on how you want to take a look at that checkbook. But now he's got himself a ride that's for the whole season. Jay and Jay, the folks that uh, have this car that uh, he's driving today. Now look at Benson closing in. And here comes Kenny Wallace closing in on Patty Mouiz in number 40. Patty is back in 11th spot. Holding her own. She has not raced here since 1990. She tried to race here last year, but had engine problems in qualifying and just missed the hooligan race. So she didn't get an opportunity to turn any actual competitive laps. So it's been a long time since she's raced here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Down to the inside, Jeff Green, number three, slides through beneath that number eight car of Kenny Wallace. Benson, so patient, waited out, but when it gets to the end, he's only led 61 laps this year, Benson. Now look at Setzer in the 51, trying to go under McLaughlin, and Fidoa in the 55. The guy that made up a lap under Green, two races back at Loudoun, New Hampshire, and gave us uh, a little predestined look at what he was going to be came back and won at Nazareth and he's on a roll and take a look at 52 there's Schrader up to 19th right behind Setzer Ken Schrader who started well back in the field today 33rd position won yesterday's qualifying race on a roll got caution out yellow was out trouble in the back straight away racing back to the flag give it to Bickle followed by Leslie and Sawyer car 35 Spinning on the back straightaway, and that will be a caution flag for Doug Heveron. And that's uh, also David Bonnet's number 03 in trouble. We've got two cars back there that have spun, and we'll be back with more of the story in just a moment. The Red Dog 300 is brought to you by Castrol GTX, engineered for greater protection against breakdown, by AutoZone. The best parts in auto parts. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? With 10 laps complete, we're watching the hook come out for David Bonnet early in the going here, bringing in the 03. Let's take a look at this incident on the backstretch. Now that, to me, would appear to be Doug Heveron's car. Yeah, and he has already gone back into the garage area. Heavy damage on the left side of Heveron's number 35 car. And trying to avoid it, the bonnet car gets collected. There's the 35 car that had such a great run last week. Heveron scoring a career best second at Nazareth just a week ago, now back in the garage area. Let's go down to Larry McReynolds. I'm here with Morgan Shepard. Morgan, the car just never really get up to speed when they dropped the green flag. Can you tell us what happened? Well, you know, I told the guys when we was going around the track, I said, something's terribly wrong with the ignition. Uh, it was missing and just wouldn't run at all. So we then we come in and tried to change the wires, thought maybe something was wrong uh, in the distributor. We changed them, then it wouldn't run. And so uh, uh, we ha had a little bit of miss yesterday, but the car was real good and fast. And, we took a distributor out of Winston Cup car and put it in. Undoubtedly, the wires didn't match up or something. Not quite the kind of day Morgan would like to have. Maybe a better day tomorrow. Let's go to Randy and see what happened on pit road during that caution. Well, just a couple of pit notes so far early on in the Red Dog 300. Here's the way it stacks up. Each of these teams gets three sets of tires under caution. They can change all they want under green flag. 55 miles an hour down pit road, seven men over the wall, and the pit window for gas is about 60 to 65 laps. Let's go to Rick Benjamin, who's in the PCC Center. Well, Randy, we are here indeed, and we'll take a look now at the Auto Week Week in Racing, brought to you by Auto Week, America's number one enthusiast, Auto Weekly. It's been a huge week of racing here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, leading up to the Coca-Cola 600. This is Wednesday night when Jeff Gordon didn't really surprise anyone taking the pole for the Coca-Cola 600 tomorrow with a speed of more than 183 miles an hour. Also on the card Wednesday night after qualifying, 
the NASCAR Sportsman Series cars went 100 miles. And you see a very close finish. Lester Lesniski in the black car defeating Marty Ward. Lesniski's been coming here for a long time trying to win one of these. He finally got his victory Wednesday night. Lesniski the winner over Ward, Wally Fowler, Gary Layton, and Jerry Rector. Your top five in the Sportsman Series cars. If you'd like to pick up a subscription to Auto Week, it's a great magazine. 1-800-232-1522 is the number to call. 52 weeks, $17.95, the lowest price ever. Water Week always first with the inside news of racing and personalities, driving impressions, and more. Call them now. Don't delay. The offer ends Monday. Ken Squire, a lot of these drivers are hoping to offer some trouble to Rich Bickle as we get ready to go green. And it looks like they're going to have some trouble getting to him the way he's been running early on, coming down to complete 12 laps and going back under green. Greg Sachs has been on pit road three times in this period, doing some ins and outs as uh, he's trying to get his car sorted out. Meanwhile, on the restart, Bickle first, Leslie second. It is Sawyer third, Mark Martin, Chad Little going around into two. Michael Waltrip back there in six. Dale Jarrett, Hermie Sadler, Mike Wallace, Jason Keller, a top ten in the back straightaway. And look at this run. Here comes Chad Little down to the bottom. Seeking that fourth win of the year and on the very track that broke his right leg, broke his shoulder, gave him a concussion just a year ago. On board. Mark Martin, or rather the uh, Mark Martin car, Win Dixie Ford giving you these pictures. As they snuggle down and turn number one, Chad Little rolling well. And it's just amazing how strong he is today, Ken, given what happened to him just a year ago in this race. He was thrust into the first turn wall at very, very high speed. The car went home in a basket. He left this racetrack in an ambulance, and look at him right now, running in third position. Down the back straightaway, around turns three and four, coming back to the strike. You see the 54 of Bickle up in front, Tracy Leslie and Chad Little, and here's Fidoa. Last week's winner off the pace, coming on the pit road, looks like a motor is gone on car number 55. And last week when he won, he had no sponsor. This week he's got one with that motor gone. He's going to need a little financial help, Ken. Randy Pemberton can tell us more about this. Yeah, I can just confirm it for you, Ken. There's no doubt about it. The motor has quit. They do not know what the problem is. He's obviously going to go a lap down here. The hood's going to go up. Tough break for the guy who won last week. Wow. Fourth in points coming into today, Fidoa. As we watch Mike Wallace down on the inside. Got his hands full out there. Jason Keller, Dale Jarrett scrapping with him. There's Mike Wallace in the 90. Trying to pull away right now. Boy, that Jarrett car just streaks up the outside. He's got a lot of motivation to run fast. Things are not going well in the Winston Cup garage for Jarrett. This is a very good chance to win for him here. 54 in trouble. Rich Bickle, Bickle. the pole sitter, on the pit road. You saw him slowing down. Now he eases up onto the pit road, and Randy is waiting for him. Well, he had just radioed Roger Purcell, his crew chief, said something's gone bad wrong with this. They had a vibration, evidently. They're going to go ahead and change four tires. Yep, they definitely have confirmed they think it's a flight. I think it's a flat on the right side. We don't know if it's the right front or the right rear. They're going, going to go ahead and change all four, supposedly. We're on the right-hand side. Here they come around the left. He goes. He's getting ready to go a lap down. Boy, this is unbelievable. Car was running so well. Good pit stop for him so far, though. Out of that rough and tumble Wisconsin circuit. His dad a great racer up there. Rich trying to make this run and having trouble at lap 15 was when he came in. Meanwhile, Tracy Leslie and Chad Little stay up in front. Ken Schrader has come to 12th. It was a 32-second stop for car 54. Now rolling once again. Tracy Leslie in that first spot. And look at this battle. As you see them coming back to the line, here's one of the outstanding new runners, Jason Keller, giving it all he's got as he goes up against Jeff Green in number three. Green new to Earnhardt's car this year. He's only got one top five finish. That does not, however, reflect how strongly he has run. He dominated up in New Hampshire before he got himself into some problems and then finally lost an engine. Look at Grissom coming along in the 29. What a run he's giving from dead last up to 19th. He was one of the cars that was not fast enough to qualify through time trials and set to run the hooligan. Dropped out of that. He's in by a champion's provisional. 23 cars started that qualifying race. 10 got slots. The forward battle. It's still Leslie, Chad, Little Mark, and once again, down to the inside. Another skirmish from Elton Sawyer with Mark Martin. 
interesting to watch Mark Martin this afternoon. His crew worked harder on that car than any other team worked on theirs. Every time there was an opportunity to practice, that black wing Dixie car was on the racetrack. They'd run three or four laps, come in, change something, try something. We're on board with Mark Martin right now. They have really worked hard to get that car ready for today's race. And Mike Wallace is coming on strong. Here comes the 30 down the inside. A move up by Michael Waltrip. He gets a spot. Here's a fight between Chad Little and Tracy Leslie another time. Chevy versus Ford as they come out of turn number four. It's Tracy Leslie first, Chad Little in second. Elton Sawyer holding on to third. Mike Wallace back in fifth. Looks like he's as fast as anything out here now because he's really as that car sorted out. More of the Red Dog 300 after this. Back in 12th spot, they are slugging it out. Rick Wilson in the 75 is in the 12th position. They've been hugging each other three deep around the corners here. Here you see Johnny Benson down to the inside. Grissom, he has been flying up through the field, and so is Schrader. Take a look just a moment ago. This is a replay. Whoa. This is just hang on to your heart right now. Look at this on the bottom. Grissom hanging in there. Look at how tight they are. Jeff Purvis getting boxed up, slammed around at 175 miles an hour. Part of this is these guys know you can win this race from the rear. In 1990, Sterling Marlin started 32nd and won. In 91, Gant won the Hooligan, started 33rd and won one of these races at Charlotte. In 93, Earnhardt won the Hooligan, started 35th and finished third. We've got trouble. Benson. Oh, Benson. Benson backwards. Oh! Takes Wallace. Wallace on fire going through turn one. Hard hit. It's still going on. Point leader. Benson all torn up. Came in here with a healthy lead in the points. He's going to need it now. There you see Setzer's car. And the 43 also coming to rest on the bottom of the track. That's Rodney Coombs in the Richard Petty car. Those cars are really torn up. Coombs out of his car now. Caution on the speedway. At lap, end of lap 27, beginning of lap 28. Tim Bender was also involved in this incident. And there it is. It looks like Benson just gets the rear end of his car. Whoever it is that's right behind him. Just touch Benson. Look, he starts to leave the ground. The back end of the car is off the ground. The roof flaps come up. That keeps the car on the ground, but boom. Right there. That was Kenny Wallace, and then on the inside, they get tagged again. That sets her on the inside. Wallace is the car that's on fire. Big crash here in Charlotte. And that's Tim Bender, I believe, right, right there, there getting torn up. And Rodney Combs has no place to go. He gets into it. So Kenny Wallace's day is over. It looks like Benson is through. There you see Rodney Combs walking away from car number 43. We'll be back with you in a moment at the Red Dog 300 with the 29 laps complete here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Welcome back to the Charlotte Motor Speedway. You're looking at just some of the carnage. We've had a huge wreck down into turn number one. Several cars involved. Bush Grand National Series point leader Johnny Benson Jr., who many thought would have a great run today, causing a lot of that. His car got sideways, loose, lifted off the ground, came back down, and a lot of other cars got involved as well. We're working toward lap 30 of 200 today in the Red Dog 300. Ken Squire, you've got a special guest to help us look at some of the different angles of this thing. Yeah, he had a uh, little spare time on his hands before a happy hour out here today. We're delighted to have Rusty Wallace, former 600 champion, along. Just watch your brother march back to the emergency wagon. You're, you look a little down in the face there, fellow. Well, I just uh, left the condos. I came up here to speak to you guys, and I walked in and he wrecked. So it's a, it's a bad feeling. You know, I get that question asked all the time. What's it feel like to race against your brothers? Well, this is the low when they have a problem, you know, after they're running pretty good. So let's take a look at the replays and, and take us through them, Rusty, uh, of what we've seen here in this incident that's torn up several good cars. Well, I'll tell you what, it just looks like uh, the, the, the car, the white car behind Benson just got that's into Rick Wilson. Him. Rick Wilson just got into Benson right there, got him sideways, got him loose, and at those speeds, I mean, it's very, very easy to get out of control. And he's wobbly, he can't get it back straightened out. Thank God when he gets around at this particular angle, the critical angle, we call it, the roof flaps deploy right there. 
Uh, but I'll tell you what, he's coming at a high rate of speed up towards the wall, and the cars behind you just know where to go. And there's Kenny right there, and bam. That's all there is to it. You know, it's tough to get out of that particular type of situation. And uh, the fire concerned me a little bit, but it distinguished itself real quickly and went out, and it looks like everybody's safe. That's just a line burning off the fuel yeah, line? Yeah, he's probably knocked the fuel line off or an oil line or something. As quick as that flame went out, it had to be a, something uh, minute in the front. Another look, and there's the touch. I tell you what, the thing that reminds me about that looks like an Earnhardt and Wallace move at Talladega, except the roof, roof flaps come up and kept the kid on the ground, and that's the, the great thing about these things. Setzer almost made it through the hole. Tim Bender did, too. And he's about to catch it right here. Bam, that's yeah. Bender. He crashed out the last time he was here at Charlotte as well. And Combs right after that. Let's go down to Randy Pemberton. Well, Johnny Benson is uh, walking behind pit road. We stopped you. Johnny, what happened? I don't know, I guess... First time I spun out going down the straightaway. Uh, I think somebody got in the back of us or side of us a little bit and um, tried to save it, but that lifting team on Carlo just got a little loose on me too much. And it was it was pretty good though. I was really hoping for a good race here today. We've talked about it before about having a lot of luck. You were back in the pack today, it wasn't a bit. No, it was. I could have used a little bit more luck going out through the grass, but I tell you what, you know, this whole team's been doing great. We're gonna we'll bounce back from this. Everybody's just just real happy to be having such a good year. And we knew this was coming and Hey, you know, we got next week, we'll be we'll be fine. Okay, good luck at Dover. Larry McReynolds? Rodney, can you tell us what happened from your vantage point? Well, Larry, you know, started 24th, and the WCW Tracy Lawrence uh, car was going awful good. You know, sports design car, we care. Uh, you know, come up to 13th, 14th there. Four or five cars was looking for that wreck for four or five laps. You know, I mean, we're 30 laps in this thing, everybody beating and banging. You know, and, you know, nothing against the guys that come on the other side over here, but, you know, we all need to give and take. And, you know, I had been doing it, and they just wasn't giving and taking. Same thing we're talking to Evers Drivers Meeting. Hey, guys, let's get this thing underway and race the last 50, not the first 30. And, I mean, uh, they was looking for that place, and they found it, Larry. I, I hate it for, you know, for my guys. New car, Richard Petty, but we ain't giving up. Man, we're strong, 16 points. We just want to leave out of here third, but uh, we're in here. I doubt if we get back out, Larry. It's pretty bad. It's pretty hard. And back up to you, Ken. Okay, they're picking up the damage, and we'll take a quick break and then be back. We're at lap 33 here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in the running of the Red Dog 300 as you watch car number 59 uh, come in, and we're going to stay here with it just about getting set to go again, so we won't take that break right now. Stay right here and watch them get ready to crank it up, and we have an opportunity to talk to the car owner uh, of that uh, number 43 along with Richard Petty. Uh, Tracy Lawrence is here. Only the good die young. That was a good car, and it died real young in this race. Well, you know, I kind of walked up here, too, and uh, just looking at it from the vantage point out here, we looked out there and, went and figured out that we were involved in the wreck. It looked like Rodney tried to go down on the grass and avoid the whole thing and uh, just couldn't slide around and avoid the, the things that were ahead of him. He just couldn't make it through. Well, this is the Charlotte Speedway, and Tracy's down on Speed Street tonight. Big concert this evening yes, here in sir. Charlotte, North Carolina. Yep. Well, we're looking forward to being on Speed Street right after this race is over. Big special two-hour show here on TBS. So stay with us. And Tracy Lawrence, how, whatever got you started in racing? I've been a big race fan for a long time, and I had the opportunity to do a video here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway a couple of years back and met a lot of the people and just kind of fell into it and really enjoyed them all. Well, okay. Bad luck today. Maybe better, as they say, you know, next well, time. Well, we hope so. Okay. We're just glad nobody got hurt. Here we are, ready to take green as you watch Tracy, Leslie, Number 72, bringing the field down. Chad Little right there in second. Elton Sawyer third, Michael Waltrip fourth, Mike Wallace fifth, Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Green, Hermie Sadler, Jason Keller, and Ward Burton as they streak off into turn number one. And Wallace had passed the 30 car, Michael Waltrip, well before they got to the flag stand. Boy, the points are gonna take a wrap here. 231 points separated first to second, and Johnny Benson had that advantage. Goes away in a hurry, doesn't it, Wallace? I'm telling you what, it darn right it does. Uh, I'm living proof to say the most the most wins don't always win the championship, and things like this make a big difference. You've got to finish these races, and these guys are going to have to be patient this first part of this race if they want to finish this thing. We were talking just before we came back and had that incident. We're now at lap 35 complete, working 36, Rusty. Your brother Mike out here in car number 90, that black and aqua-colored car, third place now. Made up. Look at this side-by-side -side racing. Three wide. Ooh, that usually Bob. doesn't work. That right. usually doesn't work. The guy in the center is the guy that's at the disadvantage, but he goes off in that corner. There's no air on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of his car. He's in big trouble. Look at Grissom down on the bottom. There we go. And, man, we there just we call go. it, and there it goes. Hermie Sadler in the one. 
rides it into the wall right in the center of uh, the three and four turn area back to the line they come streaking and this time across it's Chad Little out in front you know I, this vantage point up here is unreal you almost wish you could go down to the drivers and say no don't do that don't do this because you can almost see it happening up here and you were the one that wanted to stay in your suite all afternoon well I'm getting excited now <laughs> <laughs> All right, tough break for Sadler in car number one. We'll take a break and be back. Incident in turns three and four brings out another caution. This is lap 36. One lap and we'll be back under green after this latest incident that saw Jason Fuller get into the side of Hermie Sadler up here in the third and fourth turn. Rusty Wallace is along. Well, you call this one about six seconds before it happened. Well, you just can't put three cars in a two-lane racetrack, and we were just talking about aerodynamics, how vulnerable the center car is. He went in the corner and just lost it and got up into the one car, and, and an accident like happened. So I tell you, it's just a, it's a bad deal, but, uh, you know, I've been in that position many times. You live and learn. What's it feel like when you're stuck in the middle like that? When you get in the middle like that, Ken, you just lose all the aerodynamic downforce. you got to have air coming down each side of the car to get to the rear spoiler. And when you're that tight, the air can't pass to the rear spoiler, and the center car really loses control. The 57 car was in a very, very tough situation because his car was not on the ground. He hit the car wiggled, it got up into the one car, and that was it. Just... Let's go down and, and talk with Hermie Sadler right now. Well, they're tearing away the rear sheet metal. Hermes climbed out of his car. You're going to put some of those DeWalt tools to work on this one. This is a real shame, Randy, I tell you what. It's a 200 lap race, and, and you don't need to be racing like that with 38 laps into the race. I was just on the high side waiting for things to settle down a little bit, and somebody jumped down three wide and I think knocked the 57 up into me, and, you know, you can't control a car running that fast. It's a shame for these guys, man. We come back every week with a strong car and can't get a break. I want to thank DeWalt again, people, Sitco, Chevrolet. This is just a... You know, bad deal. You think one day the stuff will turn around, but we just don't need to be racing like that early in the race. It's a shame. Okay, as we go back to green, quickly to Larry McReynolds. Okay, what was bad luck for some, the caution was good luck for others. The Elton Sawyer handle was starting to go away on the car. They had a flat right rear, so that caution enabled them to get in here and get four fresh tires and go back to racing. So that's one to watch for sure, Larry McReynolds. Thank you much. You watch Chad Little jump out in front, and here comes Bickle ripping back through. But remember, he's laps down after that unscheduled stop early. The 60. Mark Martin up on the outside. Here's Michael Waltrip coming with him as they continue to battle for fourth. Mark Martin's camera giving you that shot. The Winn-Dixie number 60. As he slides back a spot, Chad Little still stays in first. Tracy Leslie in that second spot. And now, getting ready to do some muscling is Mike Wallace down to the bottom. He has been quick all day in car number 90. On board with car number 90. The Wendy's in-car camera giving you the shot as Mike Wallace tries to overhaul the leader, Chad Little. Chad's led 10 of 11 races this year. And he's won two races in the very car that is right now leading here at Charlotte, Ken, and he had a couple of near wins this year. We start counting out the season he's had, although he's had three wins. He might have won Hickory right at the very end. He got taken out. In Atlanta, he was leading with about 20 laps to go. They lost a rocker arm, so they're looking at this nine-race old season and thinking, maybe we could have won five by now. Well, by the time it's a ten-race old season, maybe they will have won four. The Duran Heilig Myers Ford of Mike Wallace closes in on Chad Little's number 23. Mike's best finish this year was third up at Loudon, New Hampshire on the mile. I'll tell you what, Ken, I'm looking at Mike right now. I've talked to him earlier. He said, you can't believe how good it feels to have a Yates engine in my car. When they, they really, they're working really hard on the handling of the car, but boy, the thing in the straightaway, which is a bullet, and he really appreciates the Robert Yates engine in that thing, because it's really got a lot of power, and he's able to maneuver good with it. Got a car in the wall up in turn four. Ooh. David Green, hard defending the champion, hard in the wall. He slid along about, what, 800,000 feet? He slid a long way, but I tell you, that's a great driving job. I mean, the guy could have got off the wall, got down in front of that traffic, and that shows uh, <laughs> he was really quick thinking there to hold up in the wall, hold out of harm's way. So we've got, what, our third caution of the afternoon? And they're racing Count back that now, up Ken, to four. Be... Back to the stripe. Ooh, ooh, around that car, and you're on board as they come across. Little will be there. Bickle trying to make up that lap. He was only one lap down. He's trying to get back into that lead lap. He made a good run, but it wasn't close enough. So we'll be back for the replays. Take a bit of a breather after four caution periods thus far. We're at lap 44.
Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Auto Week, America's only enthusiast weekly. For a 52-week subscription for only $17.95, call now, 1-800-232-1522. And by Liquid Wrench with Teflon, the non-flammable spray lubricant with thousands of uses around your home, shop, and car. And by Winn-Dixie, the low-price leader. We're at lap 46. They're picking up David Green's number 44 after it slammed hard into the wall. Here's uh, Tim Fidoa on pit road, last week's winner at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Fuller has just been in. Greg Sachs in a couple of times. Tommy Houston has pitted. And let's take another look at what happened to David Green. He's already up in there pretty solid. He's up in it solid. The great thing about it, Kenny, is he's up against the wall. He's keeping it up there because these guys are 180 mile an hour underneath him. If he come or comes across the track, I mean, it could be big trouble. He did a great job holding it up there. Here's Randy with an update on pit road. Well, just a couple of uh, crew chiefs I caught up with. Uh, Mike Wallace, four tires fuel, a half a round of bite out. This you, Rusty Wallace, can relate to. A lot of guys taking a little bit of wedge out of these cars. Uh, of course, with the cloudy conditions, they want to loosen them up just a little bit. The 57 car as well, four tires fuel. Michael Walter, uh, he took on fuel, a round of wedge out. Larry? In the Mark Martin pit, they took on four tires, and like some of the other leaders, they did take some wedge out, screwed off on the left rear jack boat. The Dale Jarrett car took on four tires. The big point here was that put Elton Sawyer, who had just pitted a few laps ago, at the front of the pack with virtually fresh tires, just like the other leaders. And Larry, not only did it put Elton first, it put his wife second. Haven't seen that before here at Charlotte. You've got Mr. and Mrs. running one and two as they come by. Patty Bowie's up to second with Jeremy Mayfield third, Curtis Markham fourth, Chad Little back to fifth, Mike Wallace now sixth, Martin seventh, Dale Jarrett eighth, Dirk Stevens ninth, and Malka Waltrip is showing tenth. So we're still under caution from the fourth caution of the day. You saw David Green. Looked like he got his bell rung pretty serious there, Rusty. Yeah, I tell you what, that. you know, you guys are always asking me, what's it like to be out there with brothers? Yeah. I mean, that, that's a tough one, but how do you like to see your wife in your rearview mirror and you're worried about all these guys ganging up on her out there? <laughs> I mean, it's got to be a tough one. If she passes him, I'd like to be a, a party to dinnertime conversation afterwards. Yeah, I bet he won't be booting her in a quarter panel, though. <laughs> Well, we're getting ready to be head for Pocono, Pennsylvania. Another great stop on the Winston Cup Tour. Come along with us. Our next Winston Cup event on TBS will be at the Pocono Raceway July 16th for the Miller Genuine Draft 500. Pocono is a unique triangular shaped track that has three turns, each with a different radius. Even the three straights are of different lengths. This uniqueness produces some of the most competitive and exciting racing in the Winston Cup Series. Pocono's first Winston Cup race of the season, the UAW GM Teamwork 500, is set for June 11. And then, July 16th, it's the Miller Genuine Draft 500 on TBS. Race fans who head to Pocono Raceway will be treated to some of the prettiest scenery in the nation. The Pocono Mountain Resort area of northeastern Pennsylvania, with its scenic mountain vistas, cool valley streams, quaint hotels, vast recreational centers in a warm and friendly country atmosphere. Pocono Raceway is also noted for its creative giveaway promotions and 1995's contest is called the MBNA NASCAR MasterCard Sweepstakes. A race fan will win trips for two to the Miller Genuine Draft 500 at Pocono, plus Pocono's GMC Pace Truck, the Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis, and the 1996 Daytona 500, plus $5,000 cash. Simply apply for a NASCAR MasterCard by calling 1-800-937-POCONO and automatically enter the sweepstakes. Or to just enter the sweepstakes, send your name, address, phone number to the address shown. A complete set of rules and a free Pocono Raceway brochure are available by calling 1-800-RACEWAY. Back at the mile and a half, Charlotte Motor Speedway, and from the steel aerial camera, you get a sense of the overcast conditions. They really want to get this one in. And as you look down, you're seeing Mr. and Mrs. Elton Sawyer, or Mrs. and Mr. Isn't that what you call them, Rusty? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Either yeah. way you want to put it. There they are, one and two. Number 40 is Patty Moise. Alton Sawyer in the number 38, uh, who has uh, scored a victory in Grand National Competition. Myrtle Beach last year for the moment. 
and getting caught up. Rich Bickle has made up that lap. And look at Chad Little scoop down to the inside, Dick Berger. What an incredible move. We talk about not being able to get it done three wide. Well, he just got it done three wide. Musgrave in the nine wound up in the outside. He just got shuffled to the back. I'll Every tell you, that was real important, guys, because they got in there side by side without a three abreast. And they got three abreast at a time where it wasn't that critical. So it was a good timing on their part. And it was coming up to speed. You weren't all the way there. Exactly. The speed wasn't up. So the battle up in front changes again, and Chad Little has the advantage trying to put Rich Bickle one lap down. He's got some help. Michael Wallace and number 90, and those two Fords, they draw along through on Rich Bickle. Now, if they stay to play games, it's going to open it up for number Here 90. Go. Three wide coming down. Ooh! That's right where Waltrip ended up in the wall three wide the other night with Jeff Gordon down to the bottom. New leader in the event. Rusty Wallace's little brother, Michael, he's not so little. No, he's a little bigger than I am. He's got those four fresh tires and some wedge out of that thing, and he's loving it. Wendy's in-car camera, that Heilig Myers number nine. Here comes Chad Little, now second, number 60. Mark Martin is third. Elton Sawyer stays right there. We're going to stay with Mark as he closes on Chad Little, the racing barrister. Down in that straightaway. And he's under Bickle. Two cars lock up. That's the way you got to get some help in that straightaway. I'll tell you what, guys, I'm watching this thing come off of turn four. I mean, it, it looks a lot closer up here than in the car. I can't hardly believe this. I mean, I'm going, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, and they're making it. I don't know how they're doing it. <laughs> and now you know why the grandstands are full, I'm too. I'm telling you what, I need show. to get down here with a six pack and Miller and get excited. I'm ready for this thing. <laughs> Sawyer in the 38, still running very, very well. Dale Jarrett in the 32, right behind him. Former winner, number 30, Michael Waltrip, right behind him. Guys, I'll tell you what, I mean, they're all wanting to run three abreast for some reason off that turn four. And they're pushing each other to this trial. This is a heck of a race. Well, you know what it is, I think, Rusty? They just haven't had enough DNFs yet. Last year, there were 22 DNFs out of the 45 cars that started last fall. There were 26 out of 45. This is a race of attrition. An awful lot of cars fall out of this, about half due to crash, the other half due to engines. This is a very, very tough event. Yeah, it sure is. I'll tell you, these guys just need to calm down a little bit. They're all fast, and they're all going, look at that right there. I mean, they're bumper to bumper. You're and telling them to calm down? Yeah, but I'll I tell you, I don't believe that. I'm, I'm going to be a driving coach. I wish I was hooked up all these guys down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alton Sawyer, fourth. Then you see Dale Jarrett, fifth. Michael Waltrip right there in six. Let's go three wide. Yeah, they're going to. They heard you, Rusty. They heard me. <laughs> okay, let's see who makes out of this one. Sawyer was very wise. He backed out of there. Earlier, Chad Little did the same thing. Not so bad going three wide until you get to the corners, and at that point, somebody's got to back down or there is going to be another crash. That number three stays right in there, mixing it up. Jeff Green having a terrific run. I'll tell you, another one that's really impressive is Musgrave, who started way back on the field today, all the way outside. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. I'm standing in front of the infield care center. David Green has not yet come out of there, but they do uh, have some initial reports saying that he is fine. He's just trying to clear the cobwebs. I was handed this as I was running down pit road. Piece of a brake rotor came out of the front grill of Greg Sachs's car. The rest of this brake rotor caused that wreck up there a little while ago. I'll tell you what, that's a brake rotor. That's one thing you don't want. I had that have to be at Atlanta last year and it tore the whole rear and out from under the car. It was a terrible deal. When you get one of those things coming at you 200 miles an hour, you don't want to get in the way of it. Watching up in front for a moment with Mike Wallace and Chad Little, one and two. This at lap 56. Mark Martin just behind them in third. As they come out of turn four and sweep down to complete the 58th lap. There you see the standings. You know, yesterday, all these cars set up in the heat. It was real slick. It was real hot. We've got cooler conditions, overcast skies. Everybody's taking wedge out of the cars and loosen them up so the front end sticks better and turns better. I think as the race goes on, you're going to see the competition change around after these guys get these cars adjusted and get them in better shape. Rusty Wallace with us up here topside. you be in the 600 tomorrow for all the action. Be right here about 5 o'clock. We've got another car in trouble. Big smoker. That's Michael Waltrip's car that had been running in fifth position. And they put out the caution. That'll be for the fifth time this afternoon as Waltrip erupts one. The Pennzoil Pontiac comes apart just in turns three and four. Michael Waltrip slowing it down, and I guess he has scattered not only engine but oil, and they are putting out a flag. Let's go to Larry McReynolds with Tommy Houston. 
I'm here in the Tommy Houston pits. He had a, thought he had a broken axle. They pulled the left rear axle out, and it's not broken. So either he's got the right rear axle broke, possibly a ratchet that's went out in the rear end. So uh, when you have one of those things happen, it uh, can really be a handful to drive. Back to Ken. Larry, how long does it take to uh, change that? It, it depends on how cooperative the broken axle is to come out. Sometimes they'll come right out, and sometimes you've got to drive them out from the other side. So it just depends on how cooperative the broken axle wants to be. Thank you very much. All right, we're at 58 laps now down, and we're going to pause for a message and then be back with more of the story of the Red Dog 300 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And we are back at the Charlotte Motor Speedway with now 60 laps complete. And at uh, the present time has Mike Wallace in front, Chad Little in second, and Mark Martin here in the Winn-Dixie car in third. How about it, Mark Martin? How's that car working? Uh, the car is pushing real bad right now, but uh, we're going to have one more stop here today, so we'll uh, get some wedge out of it, probably get it freed up a little bit. These guys are running really good out here right now, and I'm kind of struggling along. Just bide my time. All right. Well, we'll watch you bide your time here. Good luck. Thanks. As they get ready on a restart, Dick Berger is saying that 60 is the one he wants to watch out here today. That's a real, real fast car, Ken. That car last year won at Darlington, was second at Richmond, won Rockingham, second here at Charlotte, and Mark really knows his way around here. Down for a start as they complete 61 laps. Mike Wallace leads them down, Chad Little in second, Martin third, Dale Jarrett fourth, Jeff Green fifth, Larry Pearson sixth, Purvis seventh, Keller is eighth, Rick Wilson is ninth, and Ward Burton in tenth. Away and running once again. And I can't imagine what kind of day Bickle would be having had he not the earlier uh, problems. Wisconsin racer. Remember all the trouble he had at Daytona all day long? He had trouble in the pits a couple of times. He still had a great run down there. I'll tell you, the pit crew does everything for you. I mean, it's really, you got to have a total team effort. You miss the pit crew, you're really missing a big part of it. Bickle's given 10% of his winnings away to charity today, by the way. 10% of the gross, not the net. To, to uh, whom? One of the charities that, that they're interested in. It's a kick thing. So it's back straight away. Watching Mike Wallace stay in front and trying to get away. And here comes Jeff Green down to the inside as he makes this move on Dale Jarrett. Is it still as rough up there in four as it's been in the past? It's it's really not, Ken. The track is really in wonderful condition. It's smooth in both ends. You can run high, low. In fact, in the Winston, as at the end of the Winston, my car was really working wonderful at the top of turn one and two. So uh, it's not the old track for sure. It's a lot better. Car number three going for fourth position. Jeff Green and look at him again, three wide, making a Wallace move. Purvis on the bottom gets it done. Larry Pearson with that sprained wrist in the middle. It can't be much fun out there for no, 200 laps. It's not at all. Trust me, you wouldn't want to be racing with a sprained wrist. And I had a broken wrist a couple years ago after that accident. And I got the car sideways coming off a of turn two and could never recover. And the wrist really could be a, a, a problem. And he's having trouble with it here, too. He's tried several different uh, cast splints, that kind of thing, to make himself a bit more comfortable. It's just not easy to drive with one hand. Well, the key today for him is just take it nice and easy. Don't put yourself in a predicament you can't get out of. And he's doing a good job of that. Larry Pearson, number 92 in seventh place, the Stanley Tool Car. Last year's winner, Phil Parsons, is now on pit road. As it shakes out right now, Mike Wallace first, Little second, Martin Green, Jarrett, Purvis, Keller, Pearson. Rick Wilson is ninth. Ward Burton up to 10th. He started way on the end of the field. Jerry Mayfield is running in the uh, 11th spot out there. Going a little further back in the field, you see Terry Lamonte right here in that 14 car. He had to get in through that qualifying race. One here last fall, Terry Lavani, and look at him this year. Has to qualify through the hooligan, running toward the back of the pack. Shows how competitive this is. One here twice in that fall race. He's 22nd right now. There's Fuller right along beside him on the outside. Fuller's car a little crashed in the nose, falling back to 47. Sunoco car. There's, there's so many cars out here you can't count out. They're so early in the race. We're only 66 laps in this thing. I mean, they're going to do a lot of adjusting. Don't count Terry Labonte out. Dale Jarrett, a host of them back there. 
Now we heard about Morgan Shepard's problems earlier. He is not having much of a fun day. Ignition wiring, something's amiss there. He was in and talked to us. Oh yeah, it's terrible when you get that early. I mean, you you practice and practice and practice, and the car's perfect. The first lap of the race, you realize you got a problem. It's a bad deal. It makes for a long day. He's hanging in there though. But well back out of that lead lap is the 21. He is the lap down. There you see Jim Bounds, number 51. He's had a couple of good runs this season. Giving himself a 21st position at the present time. And he stayed well up in the points, too, this year. Perla Bonney in the 14 has won a total of six of these Bush Series races. Two of them here at Charlotte. So I guess we can say a third of his career wins in this division have happened right here at Charlotte. I tell you what, I really think the Grand National Circuit getting back in for Terry has really launched him back up. He's won a lot of races since he's got back in the circuit. He's kind of got himself wound back up. He's paying a lot of attention to the chassis. The Hendricks guys are working hard with him, and it's it's been a plus for him. Battle for 21st here. Jim Bound on the inside. Terry Labonte up high in the white number 14. Not the same car he won with here in the fall, and he had been having chassis problems with it in practice. Of course, when the weather changed, that made it even worse. He was pushing. Now I'm sure he's pushing much worse. I'll tell you, this particular part of the race, you're getting, you'll see they're getting them all strung out. Now the guys are thinking about the chassis. What can I do to make it better in this particular corner instead of worrying for their lives in every corner they make it in because they're so clustered up? Now, take a look there. Phil Parsons, when you said Panhard bars, messed up on that car number 99. And back up front, take a look at Rich Bickle, Wisconsin, Edgerton, Wisconsin driver on the outside. He is trying to make up a lap on Mike Wallace. You want to let him go? Well, if I was to the cars that quick, I don't think I'd be flying down the inside like that. But, you know, Mike, he knows what his car is doing. He knows how it's handling, and it's really up to him. I mean, I don't believe he'd uh, take the car out in a ragged edge right now this early in the race. As long as you've got air between those cars, getting in the corner. You don't want to get in side by side. Sometimes you make it, most of the time you don't. You're riding with the leader, Mike Wallace, in the Red Dog 300 with 70 watt of 200 laps complete. Mike Wallace, he's happy with the results of the repaving effort that have been made here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway and told us about it. Well, I personally like it a lot better since it's paved now because down in four, there used to be a lot of ripples and you had to counter in and be ready for the chatter of the car, you know, and was the car loose or was it chattering through the bumps? Did you have to work on your shocks better, things like that? So, no, it's definitely a much better racetrack. Much better racetrack for Mike Wallace with Rich Bickle up on the outside. You see Chad Little, the red and yellow number 23 that was all torn up last week, and you're riding with Mike as he slices down that back straightaway and tries to get rid of Rich Bickle. Well, I'll tell you up. what, I see it jumping and wobbling. I wouldn't want to be riding with him. <laughs> Rusty Wallace alongside with Dr. Dick Bergeron this afternoon. Down in the pits, Larry McReynolds and Randy Pemberton bringing you the action, which is the prelude to the Coca-Cola 600. Starts at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon here on TBS. Now, we just talked about how nice it feels to get in the lead and get spread out and get working on a car. When you get two cars running side by side, they create so much aerodynamic drag, they slow everybody down. I want you to look at what it's done to the points. They're all piled up now going into turn three, and that's not a good feeling. And watch Jeff Purvis in number four. He's having a very good run. Jeff Purvis is right in there mixing it up and takes himself to second place. Looking at three wide again, too. Mark Martin in that number 60 car. You're on board with him right now. A look at Jeff Green scooting through. Boy, those guys on the outside piercing the barrier in turns one and two. Well, Ken, one thing you need to remember, the outside is not a bad lane to be in, and you've got that clean air to the car. I mean, we, were, we passed a lot of cars going to turn one and turn three during the Winston Open, uh, the Winston Select the other day. That's a good, good feeling. Take a look at Ward Burke, number 95, all the way up to third spot. Larry McReynolds has a great story on that car. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's obviously Ward Burton knows his way around Charlotte Motor Speedway. He was the pole sitter for the fall race here last year in the Winston Cup race. And about three or four years ago, Ward Burton whipped the block of dog in the Bush Grand National Race. And unfortunately, we've got a car out of control. We've got trouble in turns one and two. And the leader, Mike Wallace, all the way around into the back straightaway. We'll get back to that story in a moment, Larry. You can see Mike Wallace, the leader, car breaking away as it started down into turn two, racing back to the flag. This will put Bickle back in his lead lap. It'll give Chad Little the lead, put Purvis in the second spot, move Jeff Green up into third, take a look at Rick Wilson's number 75. It's gone. 
I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> you know, we talk about it. You can't go in these corners side by side like that. It just doesn't work. It's just a classic case of losing the air. And uh, only time and only experience and that happening to you will teach you. Here's Mike Wallace bringing that car on pit road as we're in the fifth caution period, sixth caution of the day. Back in a moment. The Red Dog 300 is brought to you by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? And by Castrol Syntec, the full synthetic motor oil. Welcome back to the Charlotte Motor Speedway on TBS this afternoon. Live coverage of the Red Dog 300. Good to have you with us. We're under caution, working toward the 80th lap of 200 today. Mike Wallace just heading to the garage area. He had been the leader. He brought out the caution flag. A little skirmish up between his one and two. We saw from Mike's in-car camera, his Wendy's in-car camera. We saw the car twirl. A couple of other cars get involved. We're in the Durlu Pit Communication Center here today as we see the 90 car rolling through the garage area, trying to get that car ready and able to bring it back out. But there's Mike uh, unbuckling a Apparently, looks as though he must be done for the afternoon. Ken Squire, certainly it's been an interesting afternoon so far. I'll say interesting. I mean, six cautions thus far in, uh, what, the first 75 laps. We had six cautions for 200 laps last year. There you see the leader, Chad Little, while Rusty Wallace is still here before he takes off and gets ready for happy hour in the final practice. Hey, uh, give us your expertise well, the on gap's this. narrowing going into turn one. You know, the air part I keep telling you guys about, it keeps getting narrow, narrow. See, it's all the way gone now. Now there's no air. The rear car, the car starts going around, no aerodynamic downforce, and that's what happens. You can't, you got to get enough air between it, and the guy on the outside's got the advantage. Uh, you know, it looked pretty good at one point going into turn one, but when the gap narrowed, uh, it was all over. And you've just, that's the big thing about Charlotte. You know, other racetracks can get away with it, but Charlotte's just one place you can't But it seems like we see you do it all the time. Let's take a look from the in-car here. There you see Purvis up on the outside. Well, he's on the outside, yeah, but uh, they're close, Ken. They're still side by side, and there's no air. And that's a terrible feel right there. That's nothing you want to be involved in, but... Uh, you know your rate of closure, you can tell if you're going to be side by side and shoot past the guy, but when you're both running the same speed and you're losing the air, it's going to lead to disaster. He and Burton hit them that thing, too. Yeah, they hit pretty good, so. Let's go down to uh, Larry McReynolds. Mike, looked like you had a pretty awesome car today. Can you kind of tell us what happened out there? Well, Larry, unfortunately, we had a great race car today. The car handled really good. It, uh, it had one of them Robert Yates motors in there, so that thing run down the straightaway good. And I, I guess I just shouldn't have raced with the guys. You know, I was trying to keep the 54 car lap down. I left the whole field get caught up with us and shouldn't have done that. And uh, for some reason, I, the four car and I can never race together. We've been to Daytona, we've been to Atlanta and here now. And as soon as we get side by side, we end up getting tore up together. And I should have just left them go. And I guess it was kind of my fault. Uh, you know, I guess you learn how you can race with and who you can't. And next time, hopefully it'll be a little smarter. It can be fun trying to hook one of the Robert Yates racing engines up. Back up to you, Ken. The Wallace Brothers Circus continues here in this 300 mile. Let's go down to the uh, pit center. Uh, Rick Benjamin here with you, Ken, at the Durlow Pit Communication Center. We've got the third Wallace Brother. Kenny is here. Didn't want to see you out of this so soon either. Well, I didn't position myself very good early in the going. You know, I was tight, but I couldn't race side by side. I'd be tight on the bottom, and then I'd get loose coming off. So, um, you know, it's just a tough thing. You're going in the corner 190 mile an hour and uh, somebody on the outside of you. So. We're ended, up, ended up getting too far behind and, and got in a wreck. We're back under green now, working toward the 80th lap. Is it a situation because the weather's so different today? A lot of cars are a lot different than what you expected? Well, the cars are feeling good, but the four car right there, for instance, he's feeling pretty good. Going underneath 23 there, and uh, he's got a little more downforce on his rear. And I think you see these Monte Carlos coming to the front. It, it's cool, overcast, you feel good, but you can only do it by yourself. You can't do it side by side. So Jeff Purvis has just taken the lead. Ken Squire taking Ward Burton with it. And Mark Martin continues to uh, work out here and look strong in that Ford as we follow this down the backstretch. Look at Ward Burton come up to second. Now look at Mark Martin on the outside giving us these incredible pictures as he pulls up on that budget gourmet car number 57 being driven by Jason Keller well up in the point battle this season. Before you get out of here, Rusty, and I know you want to leave and get down to your car, but before you get out, that incident we just saw speaks to not only having a good spotter, but a dominant spotter. Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, Mike's a heck of a driver. He's doing a good job, but I can't tell you how many times I've had Roger Penske and Don Miller come across the radio to me when I'm racing side by side and dominantly come across the radio and say, let him go, let him go. I mean, I've saw more up here today than I've saw a long time. 
and uh, in the car, man, you're racing. You're racing hard, and you know you're thinking about the car, you're thinking about the competition. But those guys having a dominant spotter that makes a call, telling you what to do at the critical times, is important, I think. Now watch Ward, Ward Burton going around, and there you see Chad Little, and it looks like they've taken the air off the, the number 32. It, it happens to everybody. Jared. You just can't do it in turn one. Jared just hung on to that thing. He had a real good chance to have a big crash. Man, it really wasn't Jared's car. It was a car below it got loose and knocked Jared up because he had the top side with air getting around the car. Look at Jason Keller. And here comes Musgrave in the nine moving through here. For folks that are watching, tell us again about going into that turn number one. It seems as though time after time, we see you guys in Winston Cup do exactly what we've seen today and get away with it. You're saying you don't? I'm saying you don't want to do that, and you, and you know the position you're getting in. The guy on the top, see, the 23 moves up the racetrack. Dale Jarrett didn't change his lane. The 23 just couldn't hold it down. He moved up, lost the air. He lost his car, got to Jarrett, knocked Jarrett up, and uh, you've got to know if you got him passed. It's good if you're going to try to pass a car, move the guy up, make a late break so you can get away from him, get some air. You don't go in side by side bumper to bumper. There you see the leaders for the moment. Jeff Purvis in first place. And Ward Burton has taken over in second. Here comes Ward Burton to the outside, trying to go for the lead. This in the 86 lap. What a run from the back of the pack. Yeah, yeah all the way in the rear. Ward from 42nd starting position. Final driver to transfer in yesterday's hooligan race that qualifier and here comes Chad Little down on the inside scraping his way back into this thing you don't want to leave now do you Wallace? Well, I'm gonna watch his last corner then I'm out of here <laughs> <laughs> look at uh, Jeff Green in the number three and Mark Martin just sitting back there just waiting ready to pounce okay how good are you for tomorrow on the 600 rest now <laughs> I can I can honestly say the only car that's ever passed a 24 since we've been here is me this morning, so I feel good about my chances making big horse parts handling good, but hey, let's just see what happens. Ooh, it's a long race. Something's happened to Jeff Purvis. He's way off his feet, sliding back. You saw him grab a handful there and try to hold on to it, and everybody's running beneath him. Jeff Purvis, who gave us a great fight. Looks like tire trouble, maybe, huh? He's fighting. It that started thing. with a little bit of a wiggle, but he has dropped way back now. He is out of the throttle. Right rear tire apparently has gone down on Purvis car. That's the report that we're getting from the corner spotters. Glad to have Rusty Wallace with us for a moment up here this afternoon. And great and good luck to you tomorrow. Looks like a flat tire on Purvis that's going to put Ward Burton in first, Chad Little into second, Jeff Green in third. We've completed 88 laps here this afternoon. And we can get an update. Thanks again, Rusty, for spending a little time. Good luck to you out here in this final. Well, We're going to get a chance to watch your practice here okay. on TBS this afternoon. Yeah, well, you guys take it on from here. This does make me too nervous. Uh, <laughs> wish you well, Rusty. Okay, thank you. Rusty Wallace, former 600 winner. Hey, Daryl's not going to be there. I'd love to come up for a minute. So there you have it. I think we may have some other folks by. Let's go to Larry McReynolds. Okay, one thing that has been changed about the Bush Grand National Race format here is in the past few years, 11 laps from now, the teams could have a break at 100 laps and halfway, make adjustments on the car for several minutes. Now they've taken that break away, so the teams will just have to make adjustments as the race goes on under normal pit stops. One thing else that's happening, seeing just a little bit of moisture start to develop in the air down here. And they're looking for that halfway. They want that bad in this race. Chad Little, I think that's making some of the desperation, Larry McReynolds. We got three guys just running flat out here. I don't think we'd see it quite like this if it wasn't for the fact their spotters are talking about the uh, the conditions up above. Look at that race for first place. Ward Burton from 42nd on the outside. Chad Little down low. And Teresa Earnhardt's car number three. Green, driven by Jeff Green, stays right there. Now they begin to get Mark Martin into the picture. Jason Keller coming on in his Chevrolet, number 57. 90 complete, 10 to halfway. Here comes Mark Martin to the inside. Slug there, just a little jab. For the lead, directly in front of that Win dixie four. Chad Little on the bottom. How long can they stay in this kind of formation without a problem? We've had so many problems today. Crashes, cars spinning, sliding, and now three wide. Here it goes again. Jeff Fuller down to the bottom. Looked like the 23 backed up a bit there. Chad Little's car coming back and Fuller. Green. Rather green. Green to the inside, makes the move. 
It gets him into second place. And Little has done that every time he's gotten into a three-wide situation. He has very wisely backed out of it and let them go. Just what Rusty Wallace was talking about. Let him go. Let him go. So the leader now becomes the number 95, continuing to stay out here with eight laps to halfway. The interval first to eight is nine tenths of a second. Here comes Jeff Green back to the inside. Green has never won one of these races. First year for Earnhardt's driver. Back to fifth falls Chad Little. Mark, meanwhile, just sitting back there watching all this. Six cars in this lead battle. Working 94. Jeff Green down to the inside. Ward Burton likes that outside lane this afternoon, Dick Berger. He just does. Hangs it up there. Likes it. He's made time out there all afternoon. Mark Martin lies third. I'm surprised to see Green running this well, Ken. They've had a lot of decisions to make about engines, and they yesterday swapped engines trying to come up with some more power. Tony Urey, the crew chief, said, we're just not sure what we've got to do to get up front. Well, they went back to the same engine they qualified with, and it looks like that was the right choice. What a run by Jason Keller in the 57. He stays right in this group. That group's getting a little bigger now. You see, Jarrett has pulled up into it. Larry Pearson is part of the crowd with one hand. Green now dropping back. The outside line is the one that's starting to move. Down to Rick Benjamin. Now you were talking, Dick Bergeron, about the team, the Earnhardt team, and Jeff Green's effort. How about this? The lead car driven by Ward Burton. That team's only been around since last fall here at Charlotte. At that time, Buzz McCall announced John Tanner as his driver. They had trouble qualifying. They put Burton in the car a week or two ago. He's come from the back to the front. A lot of these team owners have two races to worry about this weekend. Today's event and then tomorrow's 600. Buzz McCall is worried about Monday's race. The SCCA Trans Am at Lime Rock in Connecticut. He's the leading car owner in that series. His team has won four series championships in a row. Four laps to halfway distance now. And out in front, it's Ward Burton with Mark Martin in second. Chad Little going third. Dale Jarrett is fourth. Larry Pearson fifth. Tracy Leslie sixth. Jason Keller and Jeff Green. It is a wild one here at Charlotte with 99 complete. We have a caution again. Just prior to the caution, big race for the lead. Let's take a look at how the first place position changed. Here you see Mark Martin. He dove to the inside, made his move, and got through on Ward Burton, Chad Little right there. Then... After this pass by number 60, Ward Burton was able to get back into second, keep Chad Little in third. We've got cars now pitting on the track. We had an incident here on the track, and that spin and crash by car number uh, 25 uh, by Johnny Rumley has brought out the caution. We'll show you the Rumley incident in a moment. Let's go down to Larry McReynolds. I'm in the Ward Burton pit. He's in four tires, no chassis adjustment. He's away. Chad Little's crew on number 23 going all the way around. And they're slow getting moving, but they've got the first up pit position and the furthest down pit road, Ken, and that really helped them. So as the field takes on fuel, takes on tires here, we are at the mid-distance of the event. We have an official race as of 100 laps, and there will be no break as there has been in the past. And here's what happened to bring out that caution. The black car with the red numbers just on the bottom end, the right side of the picture, is a car that just gets loose. It looks like he just lost it. Something may have failed in the car, mechanical failure, a tire going down, but it appeared as if nobody helped him along. So Johnny Rumley brings out another caution, bring it up to seven. Looks like we're going for a record number of caution periods out here today after Rumley's spin and the Winston-Salem, North Carolina driver uninjured in that one. Anybody looking to get a career as a body man? I think Monday might be a good time to call. Here's Rick Benjamin in the Duraloo Pit Center. Ken, time for our Winn-Dixie mid-race recap now. Nine lead changes at this point as we just press the 100-lap mark. We've had eight different cars out in front. Average speed, a pretty slow 118, 286 with all the cautions. Six of them for 25 laps. Eight cars out 
So we're left with 35 cars still running as we look forward to the second half of today's Red Dog 300 here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Cars out at this moment. The Hermes Sadler and Doug Hebron cars. Rodney Combs, Kenny Wallace, and David Green whacked the wall hard earlier. Michael Waltrip grenaded a motor. Rick Wilson and Mike Wallace tangled two at around the 70 lap mark today. Leaders look like this. Bickle the first 14. Then Leslie, Chad Little, and Elton Sawyer. Little again. Mike Wallace with a good lead run. And uh, Chad Little, Jeff Purvis took over for a few laps. Ward Burton, we saw him put on a nice charge out in front. Mark Martin made that pass for the lead just before halfway. That's the way things stand. We're under caution at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Live on TBS Sports, coverage of the Red Dog 300. We'll be back to take you back to green right after this. They have just gone back under green at the end of lap 103. They took green, we're working lap 104, and that car, number 54, Rich Bickle, is back in the lead. Here's the story from Randy Pemberton. Well, to document his past, early on, he was our pole sitter. He cut down a tire. He's back on the lead, or he's back up front. He cut down a tire early. He had to come in and pit and uh, change that tire. He lined up for the restart. NASCAR didn't like what he did under caution. They made him come in for a stop-and-go penalty. So he was like a lap and a half down. Then he goes back out. He lines up after the next caution, gets back on the lead lap. Another caution's thrown, and there's where he is. He's come from the back of the pack to the front. He said, guys, I've left three-tenths of a second on the table. We can win this race. He's out in front in his seventh Winston Cup appearance, or his seventh Grand National appearance. He made a few Winston Cup starts, and for the moment, he has a two-car length advantage over number 50. That would be Jeremy Mayfield's car. I think we're seeing that four-car Purvis being shown a lap down. Purvis after that trouble that he had earlier. Yeah, Purvis is a lap down. Look at Larry Pearson in the 92. He's the guy with the wrist all taped up, just passing Mark Martin on the inside, another three-wide deal. So as they come by, it'll be Pickle first. Pearson goes to second. Mayfield, Martin, Jarrett, Leslie all in there, fighting for the lead. At the beginning of the show, Ken, Randy talked about how Bickle's car was brand new. That car was so brand new, they got to the racetrack a full day later than they wanted to. They worked on that thing until the middle of the night and just got it here in the last possible hour. And I'd say they've got to be real pleased right about now they put in the extra effort to do that. Coming back to the strike. Boy, if he's got three tenths left in that car, as we look further back, here's Chad Little trying to get it sorted out and move back up through. The 23 car back there in seventh spot. And he's still got his hands full with Jason Keller in the 57, that budget gourmet car. Green on the inside. He wanted the inside. Green was right Whoops. there, but he managed to get it done. Chad Little taking it three wide for the first time today. Coming after Mayfield. And look who's here. That number 52, Ken Schrader, another car that came through the hooligan race. They want you to call it qualifying. Qualifying, yes. yes. <laughs> Special qualifying. No event. last chance, no <laughs> consolation, no hooligan. Qualifying. But that's really <laughs> what it is. It's, every place else you go and you do a couple of time trials, these guys <laughs> come here to Charlotte and they have to race if they want to get in the field if they're not fast enough in the early time trials. And let me tell you, that really turns on the intensity level as well. You see Musgrave in the number nine. He has fought. Oh, oh we got Sawyer. Trouble. Elton Sawyer loses it right in front of anybody. Schrader just got through there. Caution out. Elton Sawyer running seventh. Up in the wall, turn four. Too many cars, too little space. Eighth caution. Well, he had been having a very good day. Lap 109 is where that one broke loose. When we return, the man who will start third in the Coca-Cola 600 will also join us here. Stay with us. It's the Red Dog 300 Grand National Competition from Charlotte. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Luxair Heating and Air Conditioning. Luxair features a high-performance product line and competitive prices. Right along with Luxair, the fastest name in heating and air conditioning. And by Duralube Engine Treatment, tomorrow's technology today. 111 of 200 laps complete, and they're celebrating here in Charlotte. For any reason, they'll celebrate in Charlotte. They come out to see the 600, which you'll be seeing tomorrow. Right now, you're seeing the incident that created the eighth caution of the day and has put Elton Sawyer on the hoist. On the hoist. Here he is, 
right in front of Chad Little. Boy, he, oh. Chad Little had the right saint. We've got another angle you can look at it. Elton's lucky that when you go in that much face forward, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble here. Look like Sawyer just drifted up the racetrack a tad, got himself into the 50, but look at how close it is both to Schrader and the 23. And, and Jeff Green just got through there as well. That could have been about an eight-car wreck. Yeah, the question is, why didn't that become a multi-car incident? It sure had all the makings. Mayfield on the outside, takes the air off the 38. Elton Sawyer goes around. Don't know if car number 23, Chad Little, got his breath back or not on that one. Anyway, he's still out there. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back to Charlotte. We're back to go back to green racing here, but I'm here with Elton Sawyer. Elton, you kept that uh, red carpet lease Ford up front all day, but it didn't quite end like you wanted to. No, it sure didn't, Larry. Uh you know, after the restart, we made an adjustment, took a little wedge out, and um, the car was running extremely well. Bob and Brad and Danny and all the guys did a great job. Um, engine was running fine, just went down in three and, and got down to the bottom of the racetrack trying to make a pass and uh, just didn't have enough room. The back got away from me, and I couldn't catch it. Just, um, it's unfortunate, but uh, we did have a good race car. Let's go back up to the booth and see what's happening on the racetrack. Well, Rich Bickle's up there right now, Larry, and he's trying to pull away. Rich Bickle making a heck of a run. There's Grissom up on the outside, but being shown, I believe, still a lap down as we get this one fired up again. Larry Pearson's mixed up in this thing. And he comes to the inside. You see Jeff Purvis up on the outside, and you're riding in the Win Dixie car with Mark Martin. He is third, coming around at lap 115. 115 complete. Here's Mark up to the outside of Larry Pearson. He tries to work around some lap cars as well. There's Peter Wood just in front of him. And we're delighted to have with us the man who'll start third in the 36th annual Coca-Cola 600 tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock out here. Ricky Craven out of Newburgh, Maine. Had an amazing qualifying run to put himself right up in the front of the hunt when they get going tomorrow. This is a race that uh, you had an eighth-place finish in. This is where you graduated from. Yeah, quite a race here today. I'll tell you what, I'm glad to be with you guys. Get awesome seats. Now, how'd you get these? Well, we, you have to come up here, and, and you have to put up with uh, Rusty Wallace and all those Wallace guys telling all those tales about each other. You now, have you got some stories to tell? That's the only way know. you can get in. It's a very rare club. I have to put up with the same guys, but for four, four and a <laughs> half hours. Yeah. Let's watch Larry Pearson as he gets a, a dose of Tracy Leslie in the 72 up on the outside of him. Back again comes Jeff Green in number three. Bickle stays first. Mark Martin making a good run. All day, he has been consistent in car number 60. He just seems to wait it out and with all this traffic stacked up at 117 laps. Willing to look him over out there. These cars are uh, so equal. I can't believe they're running as close as they are all day, but the problem is they're racing like they're at Daytona and Talladega, but they don't have restrictor plates. And you saw what happened to Elton Sawyer. He, he had uh, full throttle coming up off of turn four and got a little bit of a wheel spin and, and uh, just couldn't save it. Bickle is first. Martin is second. And he plays a waiting hand a little bit further back behind some lap cars. There you see the leaders. There's the 54. Rich Bickle, have you ever run much against Rich Bickle? I don't think anybody has. You know, he's raced so much, but he bounces around and Everywhere he goes, he wins, and he's trying real hard today. You sure know him well up around Madison, La Crosse, Wisconsin, Slinger Speedway. Well, he doesn't stay in one place very long, but if he keeps doing this, he'll find the home. <laughs> Three wide again. Mark Martin on the bottom. Jarrett going to follow him through. They get that one done without a crash. These guys are running as if the next lap could be the last lap, and the reason for that is the overcast has gotten very, very heavy here at Charlotte, and it's possible at any point we could have an outbreak of rain. So I'm sure the spotters are telling all the drivers, stand on it, make believe that the white flag has just flown, and the next spot you get may be the last spot you're going to get. Ward Burton made just one of those kind of moves. You guys are right. They're racing like it's the last lap, and uh, it could be the last lap for some of them. 80 laps to go out here. You watch Grissom in the 29, the channel lock car, peeling off into turn number one with Tim Fidoa along. You see Chad Little's number 23 a bit further back. He's been running up in front today. Now Chad is looking up from sixth spot. 
Little has probably got the most exhausted crew of anybody. They only have nine men, and they're trying to service both this Whoops. Bush Series car and also a Winston Cup car. And they've been running back and forth between the two garages, and they are a bunch of really tired puppies. That 71 car is Kevin LePage out of Shelburne, Vermont, and that's the best he's ever run. He's up there right with Chad Little, and you'll recall what happened when they were just about that position at Hickory, North Carolina. Chad got tagged. He went into the wall. Right now, we're watching uh, that 17 car, the Teddy Bear car, 71 car, LePage, holding right onto those leaders and staying up in the top 10. He came from, what, 33rd today. Can these drivers are running on the same tire that the Cup car, Winston Cup cars will compete on tomorrow. And it's a harder tire than what we're used to here in Charlotte. And I think uh, as a result, the high side might be the easiest place to run here. Doesn't create as much heat and a little more forgiving. When you have a guy on the outside of you, and you have two more tucked in behind you, the back of the car gets real light. And, the, and there's just not enough cohesion with the Goodyear tires to, to, you know, to run low for a long time. We've seen it happen three or four times down here in turn one today. Now here's the battle for the lead. Inching his way up comes Mark Martin under Rich Bickle. Lap traffic all around them, and they're still side by side. Martin has a slight advantage. Tries to pull away here and turns one and two. And Tracy Leslie in the 72 has been running up front all day, and he is right in the thick of it. Jarrett immediately behind him, and Schrader, too. And Schrader's come from all the way up now. Has Mark led a lap yet? Has Mark what? Mark Martin led a lap. He has led a lap. He's running good, but he's not running like Mark Martin normally runs in Charlotte, and I think the rest of the field's caught up to him. Well, he played it pretty conservative. You know, usually he just throttles it right in there, and today, that when Dixie car has been kind of waiting the others out. I don't know if he expected some difficulties to happen, but when he needed it, he's pulled back in front. And again, that overcast, it's almost like a fog now settling over turn number two. Looks like it could rain at any moment. Maybe he's got a meteorologist in his uh, crew. <laughs> they all have these days. Well, yesterday when I talked to Mark Barton, he said that the reason they had been working so hard on the car was it was for the long haul. He really does have a distant view on these events, and he seems to run more to the end than most of the drivers that he's around with all the experience that he has had. And just as we say that, it begins to brighten a little bit at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Maybe he does have a meteorologist. Mark Martin for the lead. They do have a weather map in the NASCAR truck, and the competitors are free to go down and take a look at that. And it is live. There's a television monitor down there. They can all stick their head in and take a look and see where the rain is or is not. They all have spotters way up on top of the roof. You can watch off into the distance and see what the weather looks like. This track changes quicker than any track we run. When the sun comes out or even tries to come out, the crew chiefs pull their hair out. The driver gets on the radio, starts complaining. My car was great. Now it's tight. Side by side, a little further back here. Look at Grissom trying to make up some time. <laughs> Got Larry Pearson in the middle, Chad Little up on the outside. And Chad makes the move that counts, and he brings with him LePage. 71, Kevin LePage making the move. Oop. He's racing hard today, doing a great job. You, you put in a few laps against Kevin LePage a few years yeah, back. The, the, uh, the racing we did together doesn't apply to the Charlotte Motor Speedway. A lot of short track up in New England. Yeah, and I miss, I miss it. Steve Grisman, that 29, having himself a very good day. He has won one of these things. He won Bristol earlier in the year. This is the same car he's using today, the blue 29. 32 has gone back behind the wall. It was running in the fifth spot. Dale Jarrett has pulled off the track. Take okay. a look at three and 95. Jeff Green and Ward Burton just a moment ago out here. They came out of four with you. You know, that may be the end of the day for Ward Burton in terms of a, of a possible win. You look at the left front fenders pushed in, and he's lost a bunch of downforce on the front of the car. And what that means is that the car's going to want to go straight when you go into the corner. Well, there he is, making it up once more. Ward Burton right back in there, struggling. Larry Pearson just behind him. Chad Little. Kevin LePage. Little has been in the middle of traffic all day long. If he wanted to apply for a job as a New York taxi driver, he's had the right experience here today. There's Jason Keller back there in ninth in that 57. Budget gourmet car has hung tough. The page getting aced out by the 57 as it goes down into turn three. Jason Keller has really put in a good show here today. You can see Ward's car is just getting tighter and tighter now. And, uh, 
they get a pit stop, maybe they can fix that, but that, his car is going to be hard to drive from here on out. Chad Little up to six, and Randy can tell us more about that 23. Well, I went to his wife, Donna, who's sitting here in the pit box in the, his pit, and I asked him if he's driving smart because he was up front earlier. You have to remember, of the top eight guys in the Bush Series in points, only Chad Little, Pearson, and the... Uh, the Jason Keller have not had problems today. So there's two ready races effectively going on here today. One for the checkered flag in this race, but they also have to be looking at that championship. Now, uh, uh, Johnny Benson is back out on the racetrack, but they've gained a lot of points on that guy today. Big time, but he did have a 231-point lead coming into the day over Chad Little in the 23. Here you see Little running in six with Larry Pearson in seventh, directly behind him and Ward Burton in eighth. Let's go back up front for a moment at lap 132 as you watch Mark Martin in the lead. Tracy Leslie is going for it. We'll take a break and be back with more of the action in the Red Dog 300 Grand National Stock Car Race from Charlotte after this. Hey, race fans, Budweiser asks, who won? May 26, 1991 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. After earning his 15th career Winston Cup pole, Mark Martin and his sixth car led the field away of the 600-mile classic. But it didn't take long for two of the top drivers of 1991 to make their way to the front. Davey Allison in his four, the 28, and the three of Dale Earnhardt battling once again for the top spot. And the 25 car with Kenny Schrader on board also made his presence felt throughout the day, staying up front most of the afternoon, along with Harry Gant. But who won? Here's the list of contenders. The results when we return. No other driver could keep up with Davey Allison on this day. Mark Martin started on the pole, but he fell back and eventually had to go behind the wall with a blown engine. Kenny Schrader's 25 car and Dale Earnhardt's three gave Allison everything they had, but it wasn't nearly enough. The Robert Yates Racing Ford rolled over the field, leading 264 of the 400 laps. Who Won is brought to you by Budweiser. For that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a Bud. And welcome back to the Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Red Dog 300. Ricky Craven will start third in the 600 tomorrow along with us. And we have Dr. Dick Bergren as well giving us uh, their opinions of how this race is going. And I guess, guys, you'd have to say this one is a shocker. Here's Tracy Leslie leading for only the second time this year. He's been up there fighting with Martin and Rich Bickle. It's been a great show so far. Yeah, there's a few more that could shock us before we're done. This has got the potential for a real upset, Ken. If you look at the cars that are running up front, have been running up front all day long and stuff that you just wouldn't expect. You've had Pearson with that bad wrist. Here's two cars between them. They've only got one win. Yeah, here's Tracy Leslie that won in Indianapolis a year ago. We can show you the pass he made to take the lead. But let's stay right with this fight for a second. This is a dandy. The 54 is Rich Bickle out of Wisconsin. Tracy Leslie stays right there, continuing to muscle his way onto the bottom. Then back in third is Mark Martin, and directly behind them is Jeff Green in fourth. Up to fifth has come Chad Little. We have Schrader in sixth. Keller is seventh. Larry Pearson is eighth. Kevin LePage is ninth. Terry Labonte is in tenth. Ward Burton falling back into 11th with Jeremy Mayfield in 12th. In all, 17 cars running in the lead lap with 140 of the 200 complete. Just got a word that Larry Pearson has lost a cylinder on his car, and haven't we had an awful lot of engine problems today? This is the very first race at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the new 9.5 to 1 engine. One of the reasons that engine has been put into this series to replace the V6 they had hoped for better longevity. So far today, we have not seen it. It takes a while to get them organized. Huh? Yeah, it, it, it really does. And, and, you know, when they're starting from square one with these nine and a half to one engines, they have been run around the Wisconsin area a good bit. But that's all on short tracks. Here at Charlotte, you got a big, leggy, mile and a half super speedway. And there's a lot of things to be learned here. And they've been having trouble burning valves on these engines. Some of the engine builders had tried to go too light on the bottom ends, and they had lost that. We're only into the 10th race of the season with these engines. And it's reasonable to expect some failures. Johnny Benson came out and has turned a few laps and is back on pit road another time. The point leader whose hopes were whittled severely with a bad crash early in the going. He has missed uh, 70, 80, 90 laps. They're back in there again, trying to get him straightened around and just get out here and, and pick off a few spots. Take a look again at the battle for the lead. 
Tracy Leslie, 38 years old, the Detroit Gasket Chevrolet out of Mount Clemens, Michigan, against a Wisconsin driver. And here's Mark Martin in the catbird seat for that Win Dixie number 60, just sitting there looking them over. Don't see many points leaders or uh, points runners in the top 10. And I think, speaking from experience here, guys, when this thing closes down to 10 to go, these drivers are going to get real narrow minded. And, if they have a chance for victory, you'll see a little smoke, they'll swap a little paint, and <laughs> it's Charlotte, and they want to win it bad. Chad Little just outside these top four, second in points, he's fifth. The rest of it's all topsy-turvy. Larry McReynolds has another story. I talked to Steve Neal on the Mark Martin car, and even though they're running right there in that lead quartet, the car has been pushing all day, and unfortunately, it hasn't responded to any changes. So uh, they're going to go another 15 or 20 laps here, try to wait one last adjustment that hopefully the car will respond to. Okay, Larry, we're watching uh, Larry Pearson's number 92, the Stanley car, going back to the garage area. Remember, dropped a cylinder a couple of laps back. 145, a lap marker at the present time. And Tracy Leslie, who sat outside of the front row in eight Charlotte starts, his best finish here, 17th. Well, right now, he's showing the way. And he's drawing away 10 car lengths. What made the difference for Ricky Craven with that Waddell Wilson car number 41 in qualifying this time that made you so very fast? Some people say you were going to be outside of the front row, ended up third. Well, a number of things, Ken. You know, it's our 11th race together, and it's, we knew it would take time. We didn't know how much time, but I feel the momentum. We're starting to gain on it, and uh, I need to learn to drive a Winston Cup car, and it's taken, uh, it's taken some time. Say so you can see a little just a little sprinkle on the windshield of car number 60, Mark Martin here. This is at lap 146. How much does that upset the car, Ricky, when you've got that amount of water on a track as fast as this? When you have as many cars as there are still running, it's not a problem, but uh, on a short track, it becomes a problem if, uh, if you have all the cars running the same groove, and then you get out of that groove, you're in a lot of trouble, and that's usually when the caution comes out because they're hooking the wrecker onto your car to pull it back in. No windshield wipers. Can you see all right? Yeah, I get some some of that magical rain in. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a client by any chance? Or no, or that was a free a nice spot. Guy, I see. We'll make some calls Monday. Jeff Green right there on the back end of Mark Martin as they continue their fight. And remember now, they've changed positions. They've moved Rickle, or rather they've moved Bickle back into fourth spot. Lee Martin into second, Jeff Green into third. Tracy Leslie continues to lead. Chad Little stays in fifth spot. And here you see the number 54, Bickle, having to run from out back. He thought he had him covered by three tenths. Not the case here. When you do, when the drivers do see that moisture on the windshield, it just uh, it just reminds them that this race is coming to a close, or the potential exists for it to end premature. So. They're racing like it's the last lap, maybe the last five laps. And Bickle has just been passed by Little. Chad Little has come up to fourth. Rick Bickle falls back into fifth. Rich Bickle sliding back here at this part of the race. He's hoping to land real soon. There's your leader, Tracy Leslie, 72. It would not dampen the spirits of their crew to see a downpour oh, at the moment, yeah, would it? Right, not a bit. Larry McReynolds is standing by with the guys whose spirits have been seriously dampened today. Larry, we know you're uh, nursing an engine arm. You kept that Stanley II car up there up front all day. What finally put you out? I don't know, Larry. Uh, broke a rocker arm or something like that. Just started losing power, started missing real bad. And, uh, you know, hey, we're running good. We just got to finish these things. Uh, appreciate Stanley standing behind us. Ryan doing a great job. Kevin's doing a great job. You know, just one of those things today. We keep hearing talk of rain out there. Uh, track conditions have been changing as the day went on? No, Larry, it's been the same. I hadn't seen any raindrops or anything like that. Uh, you know, I was just out there taking my time. Track ain't changing to me. I mean, it's, it's staying about the same as it was when we started. Okay, let's go straight to Randy. Well, they're waiting for Rich Bickle to come on pit road, and as you can imagine, uh, Tracy Leslie says it's raining hard in turns one and two. Rich Bickle has a blistered right rear, he believes. He needed to come in right now, did not want to lose the tire. They're going to go ahead and take on right sides only. Roger Purcell and the guys going to work on the right side. One can of gas done. The second one goes in. Bickle goes a lap down. He wants this thing to stay under green from here on in. Rich Bickle away and trying to chase them down. 
But a fellow Midwest star, Tracy Leslie, for the moment, is the one everybody's talking about. Tracy Leslie. Best 95 finish was an eighth up at Loudon, and now you're watching this battle for second spot. Mark Martin in the 60, and Jeff Green right there with him in number three. They have been going at it for quite a while, these two cars. Green has just worked all over Martin. He's tried him high, tried him low, just about gets by, but he can't manage to get by Mark Martin and stay by him. So much more experience behind the wheel of that number 60 than behind the wheel of the number three. Phil Parsons windshield. Looks like he's been running out back and there's like, a lot of stuff thrown at him. Looks like he's been running on a dirt track, the amount of debris yeah. he's got on that windshield. A little rain won't hurt that windshield. Will. Last year's winner brought his own car here. Winner at Talladega back in 88. That's uh, that's how the windshield looks oftentimes late in the race, uh, even on the big speedways like this. And it's a hard, hard thing when a, when a driver in front of you is losing a little fluid. It gets a little worse, he'll be driving by Braille. Luxair number 99, or off a radar screen out there. 24th position, number 99, Phil Parsons. Tracy Leslie's lead is shrinking a little at this point. There's your leader. And he had that big advantage, and it's beginning to be eaten into here by Mark Martin. And Jeff Green. Well, you can guarantee it's raining harder and harder than 72. Points. That's right. Down comes Jeff Green and makes his move under Mark Martin for second place. That string you see waving in front of the in-car camera shot, that's from the roof flaps. There's a little piece of wire there that holds the roof flap when the car gets backwards and makes sure the flap doesn't fall all the way backwards on the roof. And that's what you're seeing in front of your camera, in front of your screen right now. We're going to take a break right here. We're getting ready for some green flag pit stops, so we'll take a pause and come back to catch you up on that. As you watch, Jeff Green come to second, trying to chase down Tracy Leslie. The Red Dog 300 is brought to you by Texaco Havilland Formula 3 Motor Oil and by Purilator. Legends live on Purilator. Welcome back to the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Live pictures from our steel aerial platform here on TBS Sports. The Red Dog 300 getting close to the final stages. 40 laps to go. We fought through a ton of caution periods and some inclement weather, frankly. There have been talk that uh, some of the drivers say it's been raining a little bit on the speedway, but we stay green. Larry McReynolds is with us today. Larry, these drivers have faced some tough, tough challenges. What do they need to do if they need to make green flag pit stops here in the last 40 laps? Well, I've already been prying around just a little bit, and I think what you're going to see is with about 30 laps to go, you're going to see them come in and take two tires. They, they can't afford to get that far behind with that few laps to go by taking on four. Plus, again, the rain is, is out to come any second. And uh, y'all better not tell my wife how I'm dressed today. I know I'm not color coordinated. Hey, Larry, I can give you an idea of what Chad Little's going to do, who's running fourth. Uh, they talked about it over the radio, said, do not pit until those guys pit in front of you, but we can only go 12 more laps. So that's about when we're going to see pit stops here. We're at lap 162. That'll bring them in around 174 to 176. There's Chad Little in the 23, now in fourth. And guys, Rich Bickle may be in good shape again out here. He really could be because he's been running for the last 15 laps on fresh tires and uh, certainly gaining on the competition. He's hoping that there's no more yellows. And and he's running in 16th position. It's just uh, there's two cars. Patty Moise is uh, uh, bound is running 15th and Patty Moise in 14th. We now have 13 cars in the lead lap. Moise just went down at this moment. But we did have 14 until then. So you have 163 laps complete and here's your leader. Number 72, it's Tracy Leslie trying to get himself his first win of the season. What an awful year he's had. He had that big scramble down at Daytona. He was in the hunt for victory there, and then a massive crash at Hickory. He lost two cars, one in practice, the other in the race, and was in the middle of uh, one of those numerous crashes. Take your choice up at Nazareth. Wasn't that a demolition derby last year? You watch any of that? You know, Ricky? I planned on being there. And, yeah, you were uh, going to race there, weren't you? Had had some engine problems at New Hampshire and didn't didn't have any inventory. So uh, I think I had the best seat where <laughs> I was. Concord, North Carolina, with my little girl on my knee, and uh, they tore some up. 
You picked a good one to mix. He, he really sure did. did. I think it did. And you know, in that one, fuel mileage was important at the end as well. When David Green had been running in second spot, ran out of gas in the very last lap, this could come down to a fuel mileage deal as well. Ricky Craven, who starts third in the 600 tomorrow, 5 o'clock, right here on TBS. You'll see it all, the Coca-Cola 36 Annual 600. As you watch Tracy Leslie, and we now understand he may be getting ready to pit. For sure, Jeff Green and Mark Martin out there have been closing the distance on that leader. Tracy Leslie stays up in front. Ken, this is going to be interesting because the Bushman National regulars aren't, aren't used to making green flag stops. It happens, but it's not common. Mark Martin, however, is, it, it's very common. Ken Schrader, Terry Labonte. See if those guys come away with a little bit of an advantage. And Ken Schrader is fifth. Terry Labonte has worked his way up into the sixth position this afternoon. Jason Keller is seventh. And Randy, a thought from you? I'll tell you what, they wanted to come down pit road last time. They changed their mind because Mark Martin stayed out. They did not want to do it. So, therefore, they're going to come in this time. It looks like, yep, Tracy Leslie is definitely coming. Now, here's the thing. How much gas do they need? So, therefore, if they don't need all that gas, do they need four tires? I suggest they're probably going to take on right side tires. And let me tell you, the rain is picking up here on pit road. Lee Leslie and the crew waits what seems like an eternity for the 72 car to get to the pits. Lap 167. He right on the mark, nice and smooth. They go to work on the right side tires. Tracy having his best run of the season. They need to have no mistakes. He revs the engine, makes sure he does not want to stall it. The 57 car flies by on pit road. It's a little slow, all we from an air gun problem on the right front. They're ticked off about that one. Yeah, and there you see the 72 car ran so well all day, but the pit stops hurt him. So, it was on pit road that Tracy Leslie may have lost this one. Back to Larry McReynolds. It was, it was two right side tires for the Winn-Dixie Ford, another chassis adjustment. The debate that they was talking about back and forth was whether to change rights or left, because one thing that changing lefts will do, if the car is pushing, it will free the car up. But I think they was afraid to try to run those right sides 30 more laps. They got just into the second can of gas, which should give them plenty of fuel to go the distance. Now, the key player here who has not pitted, number three, Jeff Green, he has stayed out. Leslie has pitted, Mark Martin, Chad Little, Schrader, they've all been on pit road. So at the present time, you have Jeff Green out there, and he's just, I believe, coming in right about now. No, that is incorrect. Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy Mayfield's number 60 coming in, and Jeff Green has the advantage. Now he's coming in. Here he is right now, down out of turn four. Jeff Green eases it in. And he's going to ease it, too. He got hit with two penalties last weekend. Well, is he going to ease it in? Wow, he hit one of his crew members. A little bit hot. Slid to a stop. And maybe a little bit of that experience that we were talking about, Ken, where uh, it's so hard, you know. I feel bad for Jeff because practice makes perfect, and Winston Cup drivers get so much of it. Well, you see 14 and 8 tenths seconds, and let's go to Larry McReynolds. Okay, I was here in the Jeff Green pits, uh, two right side tires. They did hold him just a little extra long for some extra fuel. Don't know if he really needed it, but that is insurance to definitely make it to the end. 170 of 200 laps now complete. There's Markham. He is a lap down, shown in six at the present time, the Lysol car. We've seen Musgrave on pit road in the 71. It has pitted. Kevin LePage has been in and gone back out. In fact, he was the very first one in. So after these caution, or rather these green flag stops, no caution out here. Field getting sorted out. We have Green in first, unofficially Purvis in second, Fuller third, and Mark Martin in fourth with Chad Little fifth and Tracy Leslie sixth. And we'll reset the field for you when we return. Charlotte Motor Speedway, Red Dog 300. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, where better food makes it a better value. And by Steel Power Equipment, makers of a full line of leaf blowers, trimmers, and chainsaws. Quality you can depend on in steel territory. Phil Parsons giving us this ride in the Luxair car as we check the top 12. Purvis, Fuller, Martin, Chad Little, Jeff Green, Tracy Leslie after these stops under Green. Schrader, Patty Moise to 8th, Terry Labonte. Rich Bickle, Keller, Kevin LePage has just fallen out of the lead lap. He is in 12th, a lap down as he's been lapped by Jeff Purvis. 
and Chad Little in the number 23 has just moved around Mark Martin in car number 60 that puts him up in the third place with 177 laps complete Rick Craven getting ready to head down prepare for that final one hour of practice Winston Cup cars prior to the 600 long way from Unity Maine wasn't it it really is but the same rules apply you know you got to be better than the rest of the guys and I can't wait till tomorrow. I'm really, uh, I'm beginning to get more and more comfortable in the Kodiak Chevrolet, and Waddell's a great coach, and I've said it before, uh, it's just a matter of time for us. Well, let's wish you a lot of luck. We'll see you tomorrow here on TBS starting at 5 o'clock. How's it feel to start in race? You're out here the other night racing under those lights. Start in the daylight, you're going to end up. It's neat. It's, it's different than anything I've ever done, and uh, you know, it's going to start in the day, it's going to end at night. And uh, I just hope to be there, and, you know, and, and be on the lead lap and, uh, you know, we give ourselves a chance. That's all we ask for. Number three qualifier for the 36th annual 600, Ricky Gray. See nice you tomorrow, to guys. With us. Yes, yes, indeed. Good luck. Watching Jeff Purvis in first, fourth in second. Chad Little has gone to third. Mark Martin is fourth. Jeff Green is in fifth. Tracy Leslie sixth. Schrader to seventh. Terry Labonte eight and Rich Bickle is now in ninth. Patty Moise stays up in that lead lap. What a day she's having. She is now in 11th spot. And look at the side of Purvis car. Black tire marks in the door, black tire marks in the left rear corner. He has been in the middle of a lot of stuff. But then again, everyone who has run up front has. It just seems as if the crashes today have occurred right at the front of the pack. That's fairly unusual. Most often, they occur in the middle of the back. But today, it's always been, it seems, over people fighting for the lead. Back on with Phil Parsons in the Lux Air car. The difference between the left side of his windshield that's just been cleaned on the pit stop and the right side that has not. You almost can't see anything out of the right. Last year's winner here. Now running in 22nd position. There you see that Lux Air car. The best finish for Purvis, the man up in front in that car number four. Right behind it was Grissom. Fifth at Talladega, and that took place last July. There's Grissom. What a great racer he's turning out to be. Look at Purvis waving, waving to Grissom, telling him, go ahead. He doesn't want to mess around with those lap cars, not this deep into the race. He's going to let him go. Or has he got trouble? He's got trouble. He's going into the pits. Pit stop. This is his pit stop. Gas and go for car number four, Purvis. Okay, I'm in the Jeff Purvis pits. He comes down to his pits. No tire changes go across. He just needs to be here for a few seconds. Windshield clean. Jeff Purvis is away. He's got to make sure to make no mistakes here now. No speeding on pit road. Get back up to speed just as quick as he can when he gets to the racetrack. That's got to be tougher on these Grand National fellows that don't get that much experience with that kind of thing, holding that speed limit. Now you're watching the 60 and the 3. That's now a battle for second spot as Chad Little gets himself a chance to run up in front after that pit stop. There's your leader. Here's your second place, number 60. And all Mark these Martin. cars have some fresh rubber on them, Ken. And uh, Purvis didn't have time to do that. Purvis was unable to get tires and stay in competition. He chose track position over fresh rubber. And he was in and out in a hurry. Now let's just check and see the difference here. Here's the 23 car coming by. Chad Little, Mark Martin, Green, Leslie run in a group. They're still showing Purvis as he did not take on tires. Just that little gasp of fuel. Officially they had him in first, but that cannot be right. It's got to be Chad Little, and, and I think they're going to change that. Indeed they are. Chad Little, no question about it, is running in first. There's the 60 car. Mark Martin ready to make his move another time. And we've got a Ward Burton moving over for them. Bit of action going on right here at the front of the pack. Mark Martin down to the inside, trying to shoot through under that lap car and stay with as you see some rain developing up there in turn number four on the windshield of the Wind Dixie car. 185 complete and 15 to go. Little is first. Mark Martin now second. Jeff Green third. Tracy Leslie fourth. Jeff Fuller fifth. Ken Schrader, Terry Labonte in seventh. Rich Bickle is in eighth. That was more rain than we've seen before on a windshield out there, Dick Burton. It was, and Mark Martin has just dropped back a bit, too. 
having a handful in car number 60. Take a look right here. See if you can see what happened. Green on the bottom. Oh, yeah, there goes the air off the spoiler. He just lifts right out of the gas. Tracy Leslie in the 72 gets by on the bottom end as well. For third. Martin back to fourth. Schrader in fifth. Chad Little looking for his fourth Grand National win of this season. Started so well in Daytona. Came right back and won at Rockingham. But he's had, uh, what, three DNFs this season? And that's what's hurt him. He's won more races than anyone else in Grand National competition. And last week, it was a wonder he finished the race he was in at Nazareth. That thing was battle torn after they'd run the distance. Now, there's Ward Burton fading up the track, and here comes Jeff Green trying to chase down Chad Little. 188 complete when they come by. And we're going by Ward Burton, who had run so well before damaging the front of his car. You can see that fender flapping. He's now pretty well out of it as a result of the aerodynamic problems he suffered in that incident. Chad Little looking for his fourth victory this year. Green right behind him has never won one of these events. Leslie has won only one. But let's not forget Tracy Leslie had some very good experience in ARCA. Won some races on some super speedways. Ran Atlanta. Ran Talladega. He knows what to do on a track of this size. That's for sure. And compared to, to Green, the kind of experience Leslie's got is a lifetime of experience on these super speedways. Green is really a raw rookie at this stuff. And doing very well, very, very well. By, by the way, that Ward Burton car that you saw being lapped is just a lap down at his 13th on the field. 11 cars in the lead lap. I'll tell you guys, it is right on the edge down here as far as the rain goes. It's raining right now as hard as it has all day, or certainly harder than it has all day. They have just informed Jeff Green, if you've got it, go get him, because this thing could end shortly right now with about 11 laps to go as they cross the finish line. As they come to the stripe and finish this lap, nine to go. There's some anxiety on pit road. Do you see those crew members, their faces? This time by, they have now completed 190. They're working the 191st lap. And if Jeff Green, out of Owensboro, Kentucky, brother of David Green, three brothers that are racers, has anything left after qualifying 13, now is the time to make the move. When they come by this time, nine to go. So we can see a little bit of rain in the window of the broadcast booth here as well for the first time today. Jeff Green, he's led a hunt, and you can see it's getting harder and harder to see. Rain is building up here, riding with Mark Martin. When they come by, eight remaining. Full windshield, getting dark, hard to see. End of the race. Jeff Green in number three, closing on Chad Little. One previous Charlotte start for the man in car number three. That was 10th in his position last October. He had a great run at Nazareth a week ago. We saw him finish fourth there. And his best finish of all time, third in Bristol, Tennessee, on his way to try and improve it this afternoon. You can be sure. Patty Moise brings number 40 down onto Pitt Road. This great afternoon that she's been having. Now she's running very slowly. She had fallen back out of the lead lap to 17th. Tommy Houston being lapped. Well, the drama of this one comes in all sorts of dimensions. The weather is part of it. The racing is part of it. Seven to go. It's getting right down to it now. Remember that Leslie is in third. Mark Martin fourth. Schrader, who started way out back today, he's worked his way to fifth. Around Jimmy Bound, they move. And again, you can see that condensation isn't hanging up on those clouds anymore. Chad Little, who has ducked every bullet today, he has been in virtually every replay, missed them all, done a great job of staying out of the incidents, and now with six to go, finds himself in the lead. Jeff Green, about three car lengths behind him, trying to win his first ever Bush Series race. Ford Chevy confrontation up in front, the T-Bird of Chad Little, who has also qualified for the 600 tomorrow. He has four more Winston Cup appearances this year, stays in first. And Green closes in. Green on a mission. Five to go. Jeff Green definitely closing ground. 
Oh, he sure is. Look at this. Look at Green. Coming to the inside. Poles tucks right back in behind for turn three. 54th career Grand National start for Green as he works on Chad Little. Looks to the outside here. Coming down across the line. Laps running out. And it rains a little harder. Jeff Fuller comes on to pit row. Final moments. It's a two-car battle for the moment. Tracy Leslie a little further back, and you can see the traffic. That's Phil Parsons, I believe, right up in front of them. The Luxair car pulling down. They'll give him all the room in the world. Doesn't want to get in the way of this. But look, look now. Look now. Kevin LePage on the high side. And Musgrave down low. And directly in front, Purvis. Chad Little trying to wind his way through here. Final three laps. Jeff Green closes ground another time. And look at Musgrave move up in Purvis as well to give them all the racing room in the world. Curtis Markham just in front. Green almost got caught in the three wide squeeze. He just got through there. Getting down to the final, final two laps. Chad Little, I'm sure he's on the radio saying it's raining too hard. And Jeff Green is saying, gosh, I haven't seen a raindrop today. <laughs> Little pulls away, gets himself a two or three car length advantage. Pulls up on Jeff Purvis. Yeah, and that's it. See, he's hooked up with Purvis now, and he's got a chance to run with him a little bit, and that can do nothing but help. That's that Winston Cup experience. Now he looks to the inside. In his fifth, Charlotte start. 52nd, white flag is down. This is it, and it is raining harder. White looking on there. Pretty excited as Chad Little may be going for win number four. Jeff Green trying to take it right here. Back straight away. Last time. First and second place cars. Ah, about a length apart. And here comes Green at number three to the outside. Jeff Green making his move in the Earnhardt car. Chad Little staying there. As they come to the line. Back to the outside goes the number three car. And he didn't have enough. The win goes to 23. Chad Little. He earned that one, did he not, Ken Squire? Wow. We're going to go to victory lane with Chad Little for the fourth time this year. And we'll be headed for Speed Street a little later, right here on TBS. The Red Dog 300 is brought to you by Texaco Avalon Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. By AutoZone. The best parts in auto parts. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Chad Little in victory lane, 1995. In 1940, he was in the wall. Coming down the main straightaway, one year ago in this event, he found himself in big trouble, getting nailed here as they went three deep. Into the wall he went, breaking his right leg, his right shoulder, had a concussion. He made some comeback in the last 15 events of 1994. He had 12 top 10 finishes, but it sure didn't look that way on the Memorial Weekend of 1994. And today, he's the champion, number one, and he's in victory lane with Randy. Let's get down and meet Chad Little. Chad Little, what a difference a year makes. Last year, your car sat silently after hitting the wall, uh, uh, possibly, uh, certainly that race was over with. Uh, your career was tested after that. You came back strong, and you went to victory lane here today at Charlotte. Congratulations. Well, you know, thank God for a good race car and a team that never gave up. We had a good motor all day long, and we just, um, I just can't believe I won Charlotte. You know, I mean, Daytona, then Charlotte. I mean, I'm just, this is, I'm so happy. I, I'm so happy for, for Bear and Harris Teeter and our whole team, you know, because we worked so hard, and, we were all shorthanded this weekend doing both cars and same team and um i mean uh, this is for the team and for everybody involved and uh, i'm just i'm just tickled to death chad we knew you had a strong car but there was a point in that race where you settled in fifth or sixth and i looked at donna and i said is he using his head and she said yes you're being patient how much did patience play a role in that race 
Well, I was, um, I, I got caught in some traffic and fell back in the field and it wasn't, uh, I was being patient, but at the same time, there was nothing I could do. You know, I just had to kind of hang out there. It was hairy for a while. A lot of contact in the corners and it was, uh, I mean, it was a very aggressive race, um, especially the middle parts there. But um, everything worked out all right. Chad, you talked about it being aggressive. A lot of the guys that are point contenders, particularly Johnny Benson Jr., had problems today. You picked up a bunch on them. Well, I mean, they've had such a good season. They're going to, for us to catch them, we're going to have to keep doing what we're doing and and uh, just let the, the racing take its course on the rest of the stuff. You know, they're um, they're a very good team. And But right now, I just want to, I'm just so happy to win Charlotte. I mean, I always said, you know, the two biggest races to me were Daytona and Charlotte, and I just can't believe it. What a... <laughs> Donna's from Bristol, so now we need to go to Bristol, she says. But um, I'm just I'm very happy for the team, and like I said, Barrett, Harris, Teeter, and everybody involved. As the rain continues to drizzle here in Victory Lane, Chad Little, his entire team, congratulations to them. Just another great, great effort. The Pure Later Winner's Circle looking mighty good here from uh, our steel platform camera as Chad Little celebrates win number four of his career and the 1995 season. And we'll be back and uh, take a look at more of the story of the Red Dog 300 for you. After these messages, Chad Little defeating Jeff Green in a breathtaking conclusion. Back live at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. The Red Dog 300 complete this afternoon here on TBS. The winner, Chad Little in his Bear Ford, the number 23 car. Great run today for Chad as we've documented. He had a tough go here last year in the month of May. Got hurt badly. Comes back and wins the race today. And that earns him this, the Liquid Wrench slickest move of the race today. The slickest move brought to you by Liquid Wrench. It goes to the driver or team manager who makes the best move to help their team on the racetrack. And the move is simply this. Little and his crew decided to stay out on the racetrack late in the going. Jeff Purvis, many other, of the other top contenders, decided to stop under green and take on a couple of tires, maybe a little bit of fuel. Purvis taking, the, or rather, a little taking the lead here from Mark Martin, stays out under green late in the going and goes on to win. And that earns him the Liquid Wrench Slickest Move of the Race Award today, as determined by our crew here from Turner Sports on TBS. We're in the Duraloop Communications Center. Great run this afternoon in very adverse weather conditions. A lot of cars ended up in the wall today. We told you how it was drizzling late in the race. These drivers really had to fight their cars uh, just about throughout the entire second half of the race. Ken Squire, really a dicey bit of driving out there for many of these guys this afternoon. Randy Pemberton standing by on pit road. Our second place finisher today was Jeff Green. Well, he's not the intimidator, but uh, he tried to be over the last few laps. You had a heck of a run, tied your career best, and what a great run here, Charlotte. Well, it was, uh, I tell you, this old place has been good to me. I really hadn't had good runs, but got an awful, awesome car and uh, a good wrench service. Chevrolet has is, is, is been behind us from day one, you know, from Daytona. We had some awful good runs. We've had some awful bad runs, but today we just kind of rode around there and stay, try to keep our nose clean and... Uh, there at the end, I kind of screwed up on that green flag stop and, and overshot the pits, and that got me behind. But I called him, you know. And old Chad, you know, congratulate to him. Uh, I think that's his fourth or fifth one, but he made that old Ford wide there a couple last couple laps to go. What about the conditions out there? It was raining, certainly on pit road. We felt that you had to field in the car. Yeah, I seen it. Uh, but I was just concentrating on the on the racetrack, and uh, Chad wasn't slipping any, so I knew I, I shouldn't be slipping any. So I was just waiting for him to make a mistake, and he didn't. So. Uh, Mark made him a little mistake right there in front of me, and, and I got by him. So I was just waiting. I was just trying to put as much pressure I could on Chad, and maybe he'd make a mistake. But he's a veteran, you know. He, di he didn't make a mistake. But I'm just glad for the uh, Tony Urie and, and Junior and uh, Virgil and all those guys that work on this car, I tell you. Sonny, the truck driver, can't, can't forget him. He does a good job, too. But they've been behind me 100%, and I didn't want to let them down. They worked their tail off this weekend on this car, and they got it so good for me that it was just easy to drive. No doubt about it. It's a team sport, but he represents them and does it very well. Jeff Green. A look at the complete standings now on the field. Chad Little winning. Jeff Green with that great run for second place. Tracy Leslie, Mark Martin, Schrader, Keller in the top six here today. Looking further back, uh, a great run for Jeff Purvis up to ninth. Kevin LePage finishing in tenth. Outstanding run for him. Jeremy Mayfield finishing the day in twelfth. How about Patty Moise back here in the 18th position? And she stayed up until that last 40 laps in that lead lap. Further back, Tim Fidoa had trouble today, and there were a lot of them. As you look in here, you're beginning to get into those that had some problems with this racetrack today. Uh, Mike McLaughlin, Tommy Houston, Larry Pearson, Johnny Rumley. And as you get past that organization, Dale Jarrett was, looked like a winner, 
at the mid distance, had some problems. He ended up behind the wall. Dennis Setzer got collected. Elton Sawyer was out. Dirk Stevens, Glenn Allen, Johnny Benson were retirees. John came back and ran a few laps just trying to score some points. Mike Wallace leading and getting crashed out of the race. Rick Wilson knocked out at the same time. Bobby Dodder, Greg Sachs, Michael Waltrip retiring. Uh, Morgan Shepard had trouble all day. And that's uh, the remainder of the field today. And we're going back down to Randy Pemberton right now. Well, another heck of a run for this guy. He certainly needed it. Tracy Leslie, congratulations. I know you wanted the victory, but this is a start. Yeah, you know, I thought there, you know, about halfway through the race, that car was awful, awesome, you know. And uh, unfortunately, we had a few too many laps before the fuel lasted. But, hey, we'll take the third place. Detroit Gasket crew needed it. You know, I needed it. Ron Parker, the owner of Detroit Gasket, needed it. But, We'll come back next week at Dover. You know, we, we had a strong car ever since we got here, and it's going to continue to be strong. I have to ask you, uh, it appeared the rain would have affected you guys. Did it or did it not? Well, my car, uh, unbelievably, I mean, if you watch the car, never once got loose. I mean, there was a few cars out there got a little loose, but I can't remember one lap where it got loose. I mean, that's a heck of a body, that Monte Carlo. I mean, it's they knew what they were doing when they built it. Just one other thing, how, how big of an edge does this give you guys? You've needed a good, solid run. This team's be, uh, backed you for a long, long while. How, how big is this for you guys? Real big. I mean, we need it. Ron Parker's been awful loyal to me. You know, the whole team's been loyal, and, you know, we're going to continue to stay loyal, and, and we're going to take it from here. We're going to run good. That a boy. Ken? Okay, after we take a break, we're going to come back and look at the Bush Grand National Points after this exciting Red Dog 300 here today, and there have been some big changes, folks. So stay with us to take a gander at that. And coming up, we're headed for Speed Street here on TBS. Back here at the uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway, it's uh, raining a little more, but it's not dampening anything here, nor is it dampening anything down on Speed Street. We're going to be here at the Speedway in that last hour of... Uh, practice for the Winston Cup cars and will be on Speed Street itself right here in downtown Charlotte. All kinds of music on the sound stages and you're looking at the picture live down there at the moment. We'll be headed there. They have all kinds of interactive games and uh, well, need we say more? Music from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. As we say, three stages of music. Lots of people to meet. So uh, we hope you're going to be staying with us. It is going to be hot. Yes, listen to the music. All right, let's listen to Dick Bergen right now. He's worked his way down on the track. Well, Darrell Walter, we missed you on the broadcast for sure, but more importantly, how are you feeling? Well, you've made my day complete. All I've seen since last Saturday night are doctors, and here you are. But, uh, you know, it, it's, I'm not, I can't drive the whole race. I'm um, taped up. And I feel as good right now as I felt since last Saturday night, but I still can't drive the whole race. I just got to make up my mind as soon as I can to get out of the car tomorrow and put uh, Jimmy Hensley in the car and let him have at it. Do you want to have rain tomorrow morning? What do you want for this thing? Do you want this last practice to rain out? What do you want here? No, I need to get back in the car because right now I'm in my race mode. I'm taped. Uh, I got everything to wait I'm going to have tomorrow to, to see how long I can run. Uh, I'm feeling, like I said, pretty good right now, so I'd like to go out and run a few laps. If maybe I can run 20, 30, maybe to the first pit stop. We just need to try to keep Jimmy from going a lap down. What would be ideal is if it was doing this when they started to race tomorrow and had to run a few laps up under, drop the green and run a few under caution, I could come in and get Jimmy in the car ASAP, and that set us uh, on our way. Jimmy can win this race. we got an awesome race car, and he can win this race. Darrell Waltrip, always thinking of ways to win races. Randy Pemberton. Jason Keller with another solid run. You guys have been getting stronger and stronger. I finally have a driver that will document that it was a little out of control out of there with the rain. I tell you, you know, uh, my old dirt days back in uh, Gaffney, I guess, came into play there. But uh, we had a really good car all day, and this buzzy going to make crew. They're, they're really coming together. You know, our finishes are showing, and uh, I'm trying to mature a little bit as a driver, you know, and it's really exciting. I'm, I'm really glad I'm a part of it. But the uh, driver made a little mistake there in the pits on the green flag. I let it drop off the jack, and it cost us about eight seconds. But uh, we'll be back at Dover. Dover's a good place for me. Okay, congratulations. Good effort here today from all you guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Ken? Well, let's take a look at the point situation. Uh, for sure, it has changed dramatically here this afternoon. Johnny Benson still leads, but uh, Chad Little is close to within 124 points of him. He took 107 away from Benson after Benson crashed early in the going. So it's a 124 uh, difference. But the big story, I believe, here today would be Jeff Green. He has come from 12th to sixth place with this incredible finish. He just drove so well. 
taking a look at uh, more of the standings, uh, Terry Labonte. You know, he's missed two or three races, but he's still up there in the top ten. Larry Pearson, Mike McLaughlin, Jeff Fuller stays in tenth. Rodney Combs back to eleventh. Jim Bound in twelfth. So, uh, we're almost ready for that practice period, and I'm wondering if they're going to hold this for a moment. I'm looking over in the control tower at the NASCAR area as to when they're going to uh, release the Winston Cup cars to start their final practice. Dick Bergman has another of those Winston Cup stars with him now. I know, didn't Ken Schrader have a great run today all the way from the back of the pack to fifth spot? You happy with that? Well, I was just talking to Bobby Allison. He said, boy, you ran pretty good today if uh, four guys wouldn't run better, you know. But, uh, hey, we started, we had to run the hooligan yesterday, and we won it, started 30 fourth or something missed the wreck cars in one piece we'll take it over how about tomorrow what have you learned today that can help you tomorrow well quite a bit on chassis uh, with the cooler weather from what we learned this morning with the cup car and what learned with the bush car uh, we know what we need change before we start this thing tomorrow if we're starting and it's a lot cooler than it's been all week well we're going to have speed street coming up real soon happy hour practice at least we hope we're going to see some happy hour practice here in charlotte and we'll be back with all of that in just a moment We're back with you at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, getting ready to go to Speed Street shortly. A guy who turned this place into Speed Street uh, early in the going was Rich Bickle, who came out of that rough and tumble Wisconsin circuit, and what a great showing he gave us today. Let's go down and meet him right now. Well, Rich, after sitting on the pole, it didn't happen the way you wanted it to. Nonetheless, you had a good run. Tell us about your day. Well, just to start off real good, we led the first eight, ten laps, and I cut a hole in the right rear tire, and we almost got two laps down, and we fought back and got one back, and then we... Drove our hearts out, and the guys did a great job, and we had on old tires and got our second lap back, and we thought, boy, we had something for them, because when we got our lap back, it come back again. We were right there, and the yellow come out. And uh, right there at the end, we had one set of tires left, but we just got mixed and matched, and everybody else got to put on one more set than we did, and we just missed the deal. I mean, you know, we are just out of sync with everybody, and I'll tell you what, you can't say nothing about the Kleenex guys. They did a heck of a job for us this year, and, uh, you know, four people and kids across America. It's a proud day for us, you know, Put on a good show for a lot of people, and I'm really proud of me and the team and everybody else, and all the owners and Gene Eisenhower and everybody else. And like I said, you can't stand a buck Kleenex. Well said. Good run. Ken? Charlotte Motor Speedway. And folks settling down, and they're waiting to see if they're going to get an opportunity to see some Winston Cup cars out here today. And I believe they will. Still a pretty good shot that we'll get that in. want to thank the folks from uh, Steel Aerial Camera for uh, the use of their equipment today. Always helps to have them around. Well, we've completed the Grand National Race, and that's the prelude to the 600 tomorrow. TBS is going to bring you that. And right now, we're getting ready to take you to Speed Street, which is a combination of Speedway here and downtown. Yeah, downtown Charlotte, down there on Tryon. They've uh, knocked off about six blocks from regular traffic, and there's all kinds of action and activity there. So uh, we'll have Bob Lacey and Sherry Lynch, and they'll tell us about that. And we'll be up here talking to drivers and all that's going on here. For everyone at TBS, Randy Pemberton, Larry McReynolds, Rick Benjamin, uh, Dick Bergren, Rusty Wallace, Ricky Craven, everybody that helped out today, thank you so much for being around for this Red Dog 300, won today by Chad Little.